So Alhamdulillah, many parents and uh, relatives are here. This is a very, very happy occasion. This is the opportunity that we have been looking forward to and waiting for so long. We have our brothers and sisters, both the girls and boys that are graduating from the Tanweer one year intensive program. Alhamdulillah, these boys and girls have dedicated one year of their life to study the knowledge of deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their parents. They have made this great commitment. Sometimes it's difficult for us to spend a few hours to learn something about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here these young men, they took off one entire year. And the schedule is very rigorous. It was not a joke. Literally on the boy's side, including the takrar sessions, they would be here at 8 o'clock, would be assembly, and they would be leaving. Officially the class would end at 8.30 p.m. 8 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. But then they would end up staying later than that many times. Many of the parents would say that you see them more than we see them. They just come home and go to sleep and they get up and they run to the masjid. So alhamdulillah, these are those shabab nasha'u fi ibadatillah, young people who grew up in the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we hope that they will have the shade on the arsh of the arsh of, on the day of Qiyamah, Ya Rabbul Alameen. May Allah Ta'ala grant him that. I humbly request that our ulama and mashayikh who are visiting us, honoring us with their presence to come forward, inshallah. And we have uh, this, uh, cushions for you to sit, inshallah. Inshallah, so as I said, we will begin with uh, a, a na'at, a poem in praises of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Recited by Hafiz Mustafa Ali of the first year. He is also graduating from the one-year program and he's continuing onwards in the, the full seven-year Alim program. We had other recitations of poetry and qiraat of our students in Arabic, Arabic nasheeds. This one will be in the Urdu language, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم مدينة يا مدينة يا مدينة Agar Tayyab 
کو جاؤ گے تو آنا بھول جاؤ گے نہ اترا او زیادہ چار تاو اپنی رنگت پہ نہ اترا او زیادہ چار تارو اپنی رنگت پہ جب روزے کو دیکھو گے جب روزے کو دیکھو گے چمک نہ بھول جاؤ گے چمک نہ بھول جاؤ گے اگر طیبہ کو جاؤ گے تو آنا بھول جاؤ گے حدیث مصطفیٰ پر تم جو ہو جاؤ عمل پیرا حدیثِ مصطفیٰ پر تم جو ہو جاؤ عمل پیرا قسم اللہ کی ماں کو ستانا بھول جاؤ گے ستانا بھول جاؤ گے اگر قیبہ کو جاؤ گے تو آنا بھول جاؤ گے اگر تم غور سے قرآن کے الفاظ سن لو گے اگر تم غور سے پیرے نبی کی نات سن لو گے اگر تم غور سے قرآن کے الفاظ سن لو گے اگر تم غور سے میرے نبی کی نات سن لو گے میرا دعویٰ ہے تم گانا بجانا بھول جاؤ گے میرا دعویٰ ہے تم گانا بجانا بھول جاؤ گے اگر قیبہ کو جاؤ گے تو آنا بھول جاؤ گے مدینہ یاد آتا ہے وہ گمبت یاد آتا ہے اگر قیبہ کو جاؤ گے تو آنا بھول جاؤ گے جزاک اللہ خیر جزاک اللہ خیر تو Hafiz Mustafa, mashallah, beautiful rendering of this very famous nasheed, uh, na'at rather, in the praises of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the longing to go to Medina Munawwara and that a person once he would visit there, he would never want to leave that blessed beautiful land. May Allah jalla jalalhu allow us all
to visit the city of the Prophet Sallallahu and the Haramain al-Sharifain and Masjid al-Aqsa again and again and allow our final resting spot to be in Jannatul al baqiyah Say Ameen. Respected elders and brothers, mothers and sisters, and many of my senior teachers and ulama of the city here, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May I ask uh, our respected scholars, inshallah ta'ala, Hazrat Mawlana Hanif Sahib is coming in, and the other ulama that are here, if they can kindly please come forward. Ulama i karam guzari shaykh, aga ka tashif la inshallah. Mawlana Jawad is here, Mawlana Saqib Sahib. Inshallah, if we can please move forward, Mufti Ibrar Sahib, Mawlana Musayyib. The ulama that are present, inshallah, please, we ask you to kindly come forward. Mufti Yasir is waiting for all of you to come. Then he said he'll take a seat. So, inshallah, kindly come forward. Jazakallah khair. I have to keep on calling you by name if you don't come. May I, may I ask, inshallah, that we move forward, please? Kindly fill up the gaps. Away from the door. The door of the shaitan sometimes waits at the door, tries to pluck people out. So we come closer away from the door. Then we are inshallah safe. This is beautiful. Mufti Sab, Adam Sab, Ab, Shuk, getting here. Mufti Riyas Sab, inshallah. Kindly come forward, inshallah. Fill in the gaps, please. Even the sisters, we request them to sit together. As we perform salah together, all the gatherings of ilm and dhikr, we are encouraged to sit close together, not allowing shaitan to come in between and filling the, uh, uh, the hearts with, with sakina. And with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah reward all of you who have come here. And for all of you who are taking these steps. Uh, these steps are not towards me. They're towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And towards the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'gfiruhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Man yahdihi allahu fala mudillalahu. Wa man yudlilhu fala hadiyalah. Wa nashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika lahu. Wa nashadu anna sayyidana wa habibana wa maulana muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لئن شكرتم لا أزيدنكم ولا إن كفرتم إن عذاب الشديد وقال تعالى الله يجتبي إليه من يشاء ويهدي إليه من ينيب صدق الله العظيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا أما بعد respected friends uh, I have a few minutes I was given to speak about the graduation today, the Darul Salam Academy, and specifically uh, to introduce it to our new guest and to recognize those brothers and sisters who've been part of this academy, parents, students, staff, etc. Um, those of us who've been following the, the beginnings, humble beginnings, know very well that in 2009 or late 2008, alhamdulillah, we began the Hifs class here in a house next door. And uh, with a few students, three students and a teacher, that, that, that in the winter, November of 2008, that's when the, uh, the school began. And in 2009, we started our first summer Arabic intensive um, with a good group of 15 Hufad, alhamdulillah. And ever since then, since 2009, we've been offering a, uh, two, a summer Arabic intensive um, initially for brothers, and then afterwards we started offering a separate program, parallel program for sisters as well. Uh, after two years, we moved into a, the warehouse in Addison, uh, uh, Brother Iqbal's warehouse, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and reward him for his dedication and support from day one. And alhamdulillah, that's where we had three Hifs classes and we began the Alim program. Um, after graduation from South Africa and coming here, we realized that starting up an Alim program uh, as the other ulama, my seniors know, is not an easy task in this country. People wonder how many du'as are there to memorize. How many du'as can you memorize? Six years? Because they think alim program is about memorizing mastoon du'as of the bathroom and you know, eating, etc. And they get confused. Like how much could you possibly be achieving in six, seven years? So to sell this is a very difficult thing. To sell a 14-year medical program with residencies and fellowships and all, all other things is easy because people understand what they're getting out of it. But to, to sell a seven-year alim program is something that is very difficult for people who are unaware of that. So it was tough. It was a tough sale. And uh, we really didn't get many students. We had a post-fajr um, uh, Arabic class for professionals and adults. 
MashaAllah, people came, you know, we tried, but it was becoming very difficult. Then we saw another problem, and that is there is a huge uh, uh, wave of apostasy that is just coming in. It was a tsunami that's coming, but we saw the initial waves that are taking over our youth, especially and creating confusion in their minds about their faith, a disconnect from their scholars, disconnect from the Qur'an, disconnect from their tradition, creating doubts in their mind. This is something that our teachers have always talked about and the ulama know about this. But when things hit home and they become personal to you and you see your own friends and, and, and people who you knew who are being, becoming victims of this vicious attack of shaitan, you have to do something about it. So it was in uh, 2011 or 2000, in the 2011 that we started thinking that we have to start a, a, a program that is designed for your average person who is not wanting to do the six, seven year program, but still wants to remain a Muslim, a strong Muslim, and wants to be confident in their faith, and wants to know how to be able to handle himself or herself out in the public sphere when they are constantly, their faith is being questioned. Their faith is being questioned on a continuous basis. And we'd, we're, we didn't have many programs available to offer them to, to direct them to, where they are able to dedicate some time in the company of, of, of people of knowledge, to ask their questions, to gain the suhba, uh, and to be able to get suhba of books, and suhba of scholars, and be able to connect with the language of the Qur'an. The number of hufad, mashallah, continue to rise. But the number of hufad that understand the Qur'an, the number of hufad that are connected with the Qur'an, the number of hufad that are able to translate the Qur'an to the public in a meaningful manner, was not on the rise. And as, 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 as much as it should be. So this concern amongst myself and my colleagues um, led us to developing a one-year intensive. And alhamdulillah, in a matter of literally six weeks of marketing, uh, um, a brand new program, Allah Jalla Jalaluhu blessed us with 17 students uh, who were ready to give 10 months. You know how hard it is to get three days from people. Imagine 10 months, 10 months for someone to dedicate that. That's a huge sacrifice. Sheikh Ahmad Ali from England, who was our graduation speaker two years ago, um, you may remember, great scholar, mashallah, his lectures are very popular online as well. He, when he came and he saw the graduation here, he said, I want you to write a book on this. I said, write a book on what? He said, on, 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 on the, on, on the one-year program. I said, what aspect of it? What are you saying? He says, what I see in America. I mean, this Molana has been traveling every single weekend since 1992. 92. Most of our graduates are born after that, this year's graduates probably. 1992 till now, every weekend he's been traveling around the world or in England. And he said, for me to see these young men and women to leave the outside world, which I know very well, and to come and sit in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 10 months is nothing less than a miracle. This is the greatest miracle that you can expect in this day and age in the West. People from, Av these are not madrasa kids. You know, people have this idea that, oh, the students who join the one-year program are just, you know, who've been coming from certain backgrounds or certain, um, you know, uh, ethnicities or certain type of upbringing. They're not. They have the exact average problems of your average American youth. Wallahi. All the issues that are out there, they, co they come with a full package. They're, they're average American kids. But, subhanAllah, they decided to make a change. And they decided to leave that and sit in the house of Allah. We sat here for, some of us have been here from Friday night. It's like, wow, man, two days I've been here. It's a big thing. Imagine 10 months from 8 a.m. to 8.30 p.m., 12 and a half hours schedule. Of course, you have breaks and whatnot. But nonetheless, you're still connected to the masjid six days a week. Every single salah in the masjid, or at least four out of the five salah in the masjid. That is nothing less than a, the miracle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us today. So 17 students joined us in our first year. And mashallah, that batch graduated. We have some of the alumni returning here today. And some of them decided to continue on to the Alim program. Mashallah, yesterday we heard a beautiful recitation in the Qiraat by Hafiz Suleiman Hamid. He's from the first batch, as well as other students. And inshallah, after Ramadan, they will be starting their sixth year of the seven year program. Alhamdulillah. Um, and I mentioned last night as well that one of the students from the class of 2009 summer intensive. Just an hour ago, graduated from Dawratul Hadith, and alhamdulillah, he came out as a valid victorian of his class of 65 plus at Darul Ulum Zakaria in my alma mater. And I was actually listening to the live streaming all the way to Fajr Salah that was taking place over there. And just remembering my own days, my day of graduation, you know, some years back. And today, mashallah, one of the students from here has gone abroad, studied there for three years, four years, and uh, alhamdulillah, graduated today. 
Walillahi alhamd. Ever since then, every year we've had an increasing number of boys and, uh, and then girls as well joining the program. So this year we are going to be witnessing the completion of the fifth batch of students. Um, and we started offering then two separate programs. A one-year program geared for post-high school and a one-year program or two-year program geared for high school students. The issue with high school hufal, for the majority of them, is that many parents are worried after their children graduate from Hifz program, but they haven't learned the deen. I'm very frankly saying this. If you ask them, some students, uh, some ulama who are present probably here today told me this story themselves, that they were teaching Hifz, and they're still teaching Hifz. And after about six months of teaching Hifz, it dawned on them that, you know what, I need to start teaching them Islamic studies as well. Because no one told me, but let me start doing it. And he told me that, subhanAllah, when I started teaching Islamic studies, I said, boys, we'll start off with the basic lesson. What are we going to do? We're going to go over that? What do we teach the first thing? Kalima, right? Chala bhai, kalima tayyib. Bolo, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Chala. Next, dusra kalima, shadu la ilaha illallah. He said they didn't even know the kalimas. Did not know. And once he said it, they couldn't even repeat after him. And they're, they're sitting in a hefs class for the past six to eight weeks or, or five, six months. So this is, a, this is a very serious issue that, that's definitely uh, there. Um, and so alhamdulillah, what we decided to start doing is offering a high school program combined with the uh, one-year program. So that they can study in the one-year program in the morning and after at the Dhuhr Salah, study the high school program. And after two years of they've completed their ninth and 10th grade, they have an option. If they want to leave, they can leave. Otherwise, we hope that they complete the entire high school program here. So mashallah ta'ala, this year we will have two boys graduating from the high school, um, uh, high school program that they, st they were from our first batch. So alhamdulillah, they'll be graduating that. So many parents, brothers and sisters are unaware of that, that we offer here a girls high school program, boys high school program. This is not an internet-based program. These are actual teachers who come and teach here every single day. Math, liberal arts, English arts, etc. are being taught here, alhamdulillah, at Darussalam, both on the boys' side and the girls' side. The experience of the one year, I'm going to let one of the students, you know, when the, when the time comes, inshallah, he uh, uh, will talk about his experiences, etc. But from my perspective, I wanted to let you know what, what are we trying to offer here. We're trying to offer an, a sanctuary for a person who says, I know I have it within me to change. I know I, ha I can do much better than I am. I know I've got a lot of potential, but I need to be given the right opportunity, the right environment to flourish. I you need sunlight, you need rain, you need all sorts of ingredients to be able to have a flourishing garden. But if it's a nonstop storm, like this year, the tulips didn't grow much outside because of the weather. If you don't have the perfect weather, you're not going to have things going. You need to create a perfect nurturing environment where the youth are able to ask any question that they have on their faith. No question is... That's crazy, well, you know, who raised you type of thing. Instead, anything and everything is brought on the table and answered nicely to the best of our ability. Allowing them to understand in America, how can we practice our deen while being connected? Alhamdulillah, the students get an opportunity to travel with the teachers when they go give lectures outside, when we welcome non-Muslims into the mosque and whatnot. And to see that, uh, like Mawlana Tamim spoke beautifully last night, of the idea of Integrating in the community, but at the same time, having your own distinct identity. Right? That's the key thing. It's a very uh, interesting balance that you have to strike. And we're trying. Of course, yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the hadi. We hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps us on the right path and guides us to the, what, 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 what He wants and what He desires from us. But the idea is to create that nurturing environment for our boys and girls over here. Alhamdulillah, today you'll be seeing that there are uh, over, uh, over 30 boys and girls who are, uh, who are the high school plus. College boys and girls will be graduating today. And we have approximately 18 or 20 boys and girls who are part of the high school program and the one-year program. So over 50 students, alhamdulillah, were enrolled this year. The summer Arabic intensive this year, we had, alhamdulillah, 100 students um, in, in the program. And we hope, inshallah, to continue to grow and offer that. Respective friends, this, was not, this is not possible without all of us here supporting the institutions. We have, mashallah, representatives from Sharia Board, from uh, Makki Masjid, from Elgin, from Darul Qasim, all our, mashallah, Dini institutions and, and maybe other institutions as well. Present, it is the responsibility of the community to, to support them, number one, with our own assets. What's your biggest asset? It's not your 401k. It's your sons and your daughters. I remember our first year batch 
One father came up to me and said, Shaykh, I'm giving you my biggest investment. You better handle it properly. I said, what is that? And he said, this is my one son. This is my one son. This is everything I have. And I'm presenting this to you. And inshallah ta'ala, I said, Shaykh, you know what? We don't even have a flyer yet. Really, we didn't. I don't I got nothing going on. This is a huge responsibility that you're giving me. I said, if you make dua for me, inshallah ta'ala, Allah will guide us to do you know, what you want us to do. But we'll try. And alhamdulillah, mashallah, you know, those boys and girls turned out beautiful. So we need this the community support. You need to support the institutions by sending your brightest children over there. Why? The question is why? Every time you listen to an Islamophobe bashing on Islam on TV or on radio, and your blood boils, but guess what? You and I may not have the knowledge or the time or the expertise or the oratory skills to be able to answer. So we just sit back, squirm inside and get angry and then go back to our work. Who is going to answer that? Who is going to take care of that? Who, are the, who is going to be at the front line? We're all complaining that the, they're attacking, they're attacking, they're attacking. But then everyone's going into the little shells. Everyone's going into the little work. Everyone's saying, okay, I need to go back to my, my XYZ career to raise my family. But who is going to say that I am going to take care of the responsibility of everyone else? I'm going to stay awake at night while everyone is sleeping. And that is the job of the ulama. That is the job. Every single generation, there will always be a group of people who will stand up to protect this deen. Allah has chosen it already. Allah has already chosen people. There are already men and women from this crowd who've been chosen, whose kids and grandkids have already chosen before we were born. And their job will be to protect Islam. To protect the Muslims from the attacks from within and outside. Sometimes the attacks within are more dangerous. Attacks within are more. The people who come in with a, under a Trojan horse and they create a, uh, make us hollow from inside. The job of these scholars and the ulama is yanfuna anu tahrif al ghalin wa ta'wil al mubtilin wa intihal al jahilin. This is the responsibility of the scholars that they will protect and preserve the faith the way it was given to us by the Prophet. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, subhanallah, he said, a time will come, or it's related by Abdullah Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, that the ulama, yadhabu salihun, the pious will leave, the ulama will leave, until the huthalatun nas will remain, the leftover, what we call kachra. What type of kachra? What is this garbage? When you go to the uh, vegetable market and there's a big sale going on, uh, you know, five mangoes for a dollar, whatever the case may be, everyone just quickly comes and buys, and you go at 9 p.m., and what's left? Stuff that no one wanted to buy. Rotten. Rotten stuff has got filled with flies and maggots and whatnot. Who's going to buy that? Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam is reported to him or one of the sahaba, the athar, that the ulama will leave, the pious will leave, and the only people that will remain will be ahlul raybi wa shak, the people of doubt and skepticism. They will not recognize anything good as good, will not recognize anything evil as evil. It will all be the same. Good will become evil for them, evil will become good for them. North will become south, south will become north. And they'll be the huthalatun nas, the leftover people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from becoming from that group. But this year we have witnessed the, 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 the titans, the biggest of our scholars, one by one, one by one, in succession leaving us. My friends, really we are coming to a time when the very basics of our Islam are being questioned. That's something with 10 years ago, it was an, you didn't need to even go to Sunday school to know that was impermissible. Today, a person graduates from a Hivs program and has doubts about it. So a person goes to an Islamic school and has doubts about it. Because we, we are living in an era of skepticism, of doubting every single thing. The very existence of Allah is something that now our pseudo-intellectual youth are, are discussing and wondering if there's some real existence to it. It's very, very... Uh, yani, nerve-breaking, very shocking of, of, of what, is, what, what is happening. And we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for hifadah and protection. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, That the trials and tribulations will be presented on the heart. Yani, uh, 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 wood after wood or sheet after sheet, like you have a mat, hasil, like a hasil, like you have a mat, a chatai, and you have the strands one after another. They come in succession. Similarly, trials and tribulations will be presented, will be shot out at the hearts of the people, one after another. Every day, you'll read something new on your Twitter feed, on your BuzzFeed, on your Facebook, and on your news and whatnot. Every single day will be a new fitna. And there will be two types of people. There are certain that will reject and say, A'udhu billah, inna lillah. This is crazy. May Allah protect me and my family. That type of attitude. And there will be others who say, 
hey man, I never looked at it that way. You know, we should think about this. I never thought about it. This, this is an alternative method of, of, of looking at this. And the time will come, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that some hearts will soak it in and they'll become so black that they'll become like an upside down cup. No matter you put the shower on, nothing's gonna go inside it. It's an upside down cup. The heart has become blackened by accepting every single new fitna and saying, yeah, that might make sense. And there will be other hearts that will reject it and will say, no, I am going to stick to what my Prophet ﷺ said, what my teachers taught me, even though it may be unpopular, even though it might not be the in thing to do. But this what I have been taught to be true. This is what I have been taught as my principles of leading my life. And I am not looking to jump on the bandwagon, but I want to do what is right to meet Allah and my Rasul on the day of judgment with a smile on my face looking forward. My friends, when a child, when my two-year-old or your two-year-old walks in is broken a cup, look at that, the, the face. He doesn't know how to say, you know, he's going to get screamed by his dad, yelled at his mom, by his mom. How are we going to face Allah and His Rasul on the Day of Judgment? If we keep on changing our deen, keep on appeasing the people around us, they will never be happy, no one will be happy until you don't completely leave your faith. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, the hearts will turn into these two types. Those hearts that will encompass and accept this fitan and will become blackened like an upside down cup will not be able to accept any goodness. And others, by resisting again and again and punching back, will only become stronger. We live indefinitely in that era of fitan. We have to raise ourselves and our children to become strong, young men and women, to be able to handle these trials. To live not by words, but by our actions and present a, a pristine, unapologetic Islam to the outside world. To say that these are men and women, like the Shaykh from, uh, just told me yesterday, he said, قَالَ بَعْضَ الْعُلَمَاءَ الْإِنسَانُ هُوَ مَوْقِفِ He said, insan, what is a human being? A human being is the one who holds a position. The one who moves around every second, moving target, yeah, this, is not, this is not what this is. You may call him a bird or call him something else. Snake. But a human being is the one who says, this is who I am and this is who I stand for. And this country loves that. They say they hate flip-floppers. Right? They hate people who keep on appeasing to the crowd. And you're speaking to women, you say one thing. You're speaking to men, say something. You're speaking to Jews, say something. You're speaking to Muslims, say something. We don't like that. You say, whoever you are, even if you are yani, a bigot, they say. But just say, this is who I am. This is how certain people got into office. Because they, they come off as, hey, you know what? Whatever's in my heart, I tell you. You don't like it, tough luck. But that's what the, the country likes. The be who you are, don't try to sugarcoat things and, and appease the crowd. We Muslims need to go back to the very same lesson where the Sahaba radiallahu anhu majma'een were beautiful examples of أَتْرُكُ sunnata habibi liha أُولَاءِ الْحَمْقَى well, Am I going to leave the sunnah of my beloved for people who don't understand my beloved? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So our goal here, alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, is to raise ulama rabbaniyin. Oh, those ulama who are the people, what we call Allah wale. The people who are, have ilm, inshallah, and the nur of ilm. This cannot happen without your support. Choosing the best and the brightest minds. Those parents who are here, who are witnessing the graduation of their HIF students, boys and girls. Huge accomplishment, alhamdulillah, of yourself and your children. But remember, my brothers and sisters, this is not sufficient. One of my elders from the city of Chicago told me this. He said, 50 years ago in, in, the, in the subcontinent, if a person graduated from the Hifs class, say, Yeto mashallah, Hafiji, but jayga. Hafiji, you know, Hafiz Sab is okay. He said, he's, he's, He'll be okay. He's a Hafiz. What else do you expect? 50 years ago, he said, That's what it was. He said, Now, subhanAllah, that's definitely not the case. You, as parents, and I, as parents, we can't be rest assured. We send our kid he, to the Hifs school, he graduated from Hifs program, he's set for life in his deen. Absolutely not. The trials and the tribulations are way too difficult out there for our little, beautiful, innocent minds to go out unprepared. We invite you inshallah ta'ala to support these programs by your student, by your children, and number two of course, by your financial support. And more importantly than all of that is by your du'as. If you think it's difficult for you, my brothers and sisters, this is the lighthouse. All these institutions are the lighthouse. They're the number one target. They're the number one target of, of batil. We have to have your du'a. We have to have your du'a. We have to have your du'a. Please, Mawlana Abul Hassan Ali an Nadwi rahimahullah mentions that yeah, one way to get the, you look at these senior ulama of the world doing great work and you say, who am I? I'm nobody, I don't do anything. No, wow, this person, 5,000 people accepted Islam in his hands. This person runs a university, 20,000 students are, uh, are attending there. This person does, it translated this many books. What am I doing? I'm doing an 8 to 5 job and that's about, I can barely pray my salah. Guess what you can do? He said, make dua for those scholars. 
Every day say, Ya Allah, those who are doing the khidmah of the deen, protect them, grant them sincerity, grant them ikhlas, protect their families, keep them together, keep them happy, keep them united. He said, make dua for the ulama and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a share of all the rewards. Just by making dua for the scholars and the khuddam of the deen throughout the world. So I ask you to do that today. The keep this institution and all the other institutions of this community and beyond in your dua and hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts that. Um, as we finish up this presentation of mine in the next few minutes, I want to share what are a few things ahead of us. Of course, we have lunch ahead of us, alhamdulillah, uh, soon. And then the dua will be around 5 o'clock. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll cert- pass out the certificates and a few things, etc. But moving forward, uh, Ramadan is coming. And in, uh, in Ramadan, inshallah ta'ala, on June 2nd. June 2nd, Ramadan is the first Jumu'ah. We will have our very first, very first Ramadan uh, community fundraising iftar and dinner held here in the masjid just like the retreat. What is this going to be for? Those of you who were last night, you saw what I'm talking about. Those of you who've been listening live stream or been looking at the TV screens in the, in the lobby, you know what I'm talking about. That is our phase two. Uh, expansion of a community center uh, and, is the, and Islamic school as well as the, uh, a huge a women's wing, men's wing, library, uh, caf- cafeteria, banquet hall, um, media center, um, fitness center for men and women, um, a running track in the gym, uh, all sorts of uh, a science lab, all sorts of different things that a full school has, alhamdulillah, being constructed right in front where the par- cars are parked. Right here, in front. Well, of course, don't worry, we have an ex- part of the plan is to obviously expand the parking lot. Furthermore, so this is a very big uh, 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 step for us. Uh, we're not even four years yet into, into this building, but walillah alhamd, you know, where were Isha Salah yesterday, we were praying where? In the shoes, by the shoes. Brothers were praying by the, on the shoe racks, by the shoe racks there. Alhamdulillah, downstairs as well, fully packed. Right, Khatm al-Qur'an nights and Ramadan, etc. Alhamdulillah, beautiful, beautiful environment. But besides that, we can't build a masjid for Jummah or Eid. We can't do that. We can rent a hall for that if that's the case. Our classes have taken over the entire place. Everywhere, alhamdulillah, there's multiple classes taking place in this entire building. And we're really, really, really short on space. And beyond that, we don't have an indoor gym. We don't have the weather of Florida or California here, right? It's Chicago. We got to get up with the reality. So we have to, uh, we have, to have a gym. We have to have a banquet hall for our, for our community that wants to do events. We can't even feed the people as much as we want to, simply because we don't have a, a nice hall to, to feed the people. We definitely don't have our high school classrooms. We don't have a library that we require. So all of this, alhamdulillah, is part of our a phase two expansion, youth and community center. And inshallah, we would like you to please join us. June 2nd, mark your calendars from now. Uh, join us for iftar, uh, have dinner with us, and attend the fundraising uh, with us. And of course, that's not going to be the first or the last. There's going to be obviously many more in the next, uh, you know, soon future. But we hope through your dua that we begin construction in the next six months. We are submitting our, uh, uh, our plans in the next few weeks. And we hope if things, uh, there are not too, too many hiccups, uh, to get, as soon as the permit begins, we would like to even break ground if possible at the end of this year, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. You know, or at the latest, hopefully, 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 early spring. Uh, however, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has plans. So we need your support for that. Tell your friends, tell your family members. It's going to be a, a few year project. We need, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's part of the growing uh, process. What, one, one scholar told me something beautifully. He said, if your son gets accepted into a medical school, and he says, Baba, I got it, man, each textbook costs 400 And I forget medical school, college, $400 textbook. Do you say, why did you get into medical school, man? Yeah, waba, bala, four hundred dollar textbook. You know, why didn't you just stay in, you know, in some local community college and just did some vocational school where you didn't need a book, you get a PDF? Why you have to expense a four hundred dollar textbook, my friend? You will sell anything you need to to be able to buy those textbooks for your son or daughter. It's an honor. They're in the medical program. So these expansions that are taking place all over Chicagoland area, it's not something to feel. It's a burden. This is a moment of happiness. That alhamdulillah, the child is now growing. All the masajid that are increasing, Islamic schools are increasing. There's literally every single weekend, mashallah, there's been a fundraiser for the past like 11 weeks. Alhamdulillah. Nothing to feel angry about, frustrated about, overwhelmed. Our community is mashallah, Chicagoland community is really moving forward. So this is going to be one of, one of those 11 fundraisers, if you want to call it that, uh, on June 2nd. If you're not going to be able to be there, then... Uh, that's all right. You can still, alhamdulillah, support us uh, by 
by, uh, you know, outside, filling out a donation card, paying it on the kiosks, or in, if you would like to in the month of Ramadan, you could do that as well. Last night we had a short fundraising for our, what did we do raise funding? Security, right? Security of the masjid. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, the project was taken care of. Say takbir. Alhamdulillah. May Allah reward those brothers. And they didn't come from, they came from all over, mashallah, and they took care of the security of the masjid. May Allah Jalla Jalalu allow all of you who supported us, men, women, last night, allow you to take, uh, to, to, may Allah protect your houses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect your homes in Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow you to get the full reward of the safety of all the boys and girls of this institution. I mean, Rabbil Alameen. Then we were raising uh, money for the budget of our graduation and retreat. And we just started it, but it was getting late. I didn't want to hold on for Mufti Sahib to speak, so then we stopped after collecting about 10000 or so for that, approximately. At the end of the uh, fundraising, a brother emailed. And I want, to say, I want to share this, subhanAllah, email with you. This brother, subhanAllah, I'm sure is sitting here. And he's, I don't know him, but most definitely you don't know him. And he's definitely well known to the dwellers of the heaven. And subhanAllah, every opportunity, whenever we do stuff, he's from a generic email, sends an email and says, brother, I would like to do, you know, beat everyone and give this amount. SubhanAllah, last night he emailed and he said, I'm feeling jealous that he says he wants to be anonymous. He doesn't want to raise his hand. But he said, I saw the du'as you're giving to everyone and I'm feeling jealous of those du'as. I want to, I want to get that du'a. So that is why I'm sending you an email now that whatever the highest bidder was last night, I would like to beat that. And I want to give that and I want you to make a special du'a. I said, okay, subhanAllah, what du'a would you like? It's an anonymous du'a, you know, this is amazing. So I thought he'd say, may Allah give me more wealth, may Allah make, you know, grant me, maybe whatever, health and wealth, etc. But I am humbled by the du'as he's asking for. Just asking du'as for everyone. Ya Allah, give hidayah to everyone. Remove the, uh, the suffering of the hum human, human beings. I grant everyone muhabba and love. Gather everyone on the day of judgment under Allah's throne. These are the beautiful du'as his brother is asking for. So mashallah, we had one sister who beat everyone yesterday with $11,100 um, pledge. And mashallah ta'ala, this brother said that he said, I have to be on top of anyone, so I'm going to do 11500 And he said, if there's anyone who's matching it, tell me, and I will definitely beat that as well. He said, I have to be number one. So I would like inshallah ta'ala to take this opportunity to make du'a for this individual. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and his family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him for his anonymity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make him well known in the heavens and the earth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put his love into the hearts of people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make him the best son to his parents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make him the coolness of his parents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make his wife and his children the coolness of his eyes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala join him with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the kawthar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove all the difficulties that are coming towards his way or meant to come towards his way. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the barakah of his ikhlas grant all of us ikhlas. Grant all of us ikhlas. Grant all of us ikhlas. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the wasila of that amal through the wasila like that, those three individuals were hidden and were locked up in the cave. And each one of them presented their amal to you, Ya Allah. And through the barakah of that, you remove that boulder. We ask you, Ya Allah, on behalf of this sincere action of this brother, Ya Allah, that you remove the veils of hardness over our heart, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, oh Allah, allow us, Ya Allah, to take effect from the Quran and Hadith, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, we ask you through the barakah of that deed to allow us to take effect from the Quran and Hadith, Ya Allah. To take effect from the gatherings of ilm, to take effect from the gatherings of dhikr, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, we ask you, Ya Allah, to revive our dead hearts, Ya Allah. Revive our dead hearts, revive our dead hearts, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, we ask you to allow us to take full benefit of the month of Sha'ban and allow us to welcome Ramadan and make Ramadan the most blessed month. Oh Allah, make it easy for all of us through the barakah of the good deeds of all of us. And old men, white bearded men that are sitting here, on, Ya Allah, on, 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 and older elderly women, Ya Allah, on wheelchairs that have come here, Ya Allah, through the, through, the, through the presence of such weak people and elders, Ya Allah, we ask you, Ya Allah, to allow us all to make the most usage of Ramadan and to be connected with the Quran. Oh Allah, we ask you, Ya Allah, to raise all of us together on the day of judgment under your throne, Ya Allah, in the company of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ameen, 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 Ya Rabbil Alameen. I mean, this dua is of course for all of us, alhamdulillah, we hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to continue uh, in such good deeds. The remaining uh, $10,000 that for the budget, if anyone would like to still cover that up, inshallah, you have the remainder of the, of the evening to do that. Um, I'm not going to take much time. I'm waiting for the signal. I think I have one more minute or so for the lunch to be ready. Uh, Ramadan, last 10 days, we have our i'tikaf program here. If you want to book it from now, you can do it. Alhamdulillah, we have a full schedule of programs throughout the day and the night. If you enjoy the retreat, imagine a 10-day retreat while you're fasting, right? 
So that's, that, that, that's the beauty of it. It's a supercharge, mashallah, for all of us. So please join us if you can. If not for the Sunnah Atikaf, for at least a Nafil Atikaf during the last 10 days. We'll be having a youth program, Q&A session with scholars every single even night in the last 10 nights. Not odd night, because odd nights we have other things to do. But every single even night, inshallah, during the last 10 days, we'll have a youth, uh, youth program. As well as every weekend on Saturday night, we'll have a youth qiyam. So look forward to that. Um, additionally, on July 17th, we will begin, I don't know what number is this, the 9th or 10th or so, a batch of our summer Arabic intensive. So if you haven't already registered, it's July 17th to August 12th. You're not missing out on school, you're not missing out on college. You'll have enough time before and after to enjoy your summer. Give four months to the house of Allah. Four months to the gathering of ilm. Four months to beautiful brotherhood and sisterhood. Four months, uh, I'm sorry, not four months, four weeks. Sorry, four weeks uh, to, to, to allow yourself to, to really enjoy and see something that you haven't seen. The value of fresh air, if you're sitting in a smoker's lounge, you're not going to get it. You have to get out to be able to see, appreciate fresh air. So we are out in a polluted world. You need to be able to come into this pristine environment of the house of Allah for a month and smell what it means, subhanAllah, and taste and feel what it means fresh air. Nafahatul Rabbaniya. What it means to have winds of, uh, of, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, winds of mercy blowing. فَتَعَرَّضُوا لَهَا Present yourself in front of those winds. This is it. The month of Ramadan and the one month intensive. I'm looking forward to young men and women, inshallah ta'ala, from our community to join that. If you have any questions, both on the boys' side and the girls' side, men's side, women's side, we have info for information booth. Please go and get your questions answered over there about the program. If you're interested in the one year, that also begins on July 17th. But after one month, if you don't like it, money back guarantee, you can leave. That's what we say, people. Alhamdulillah. Put your foot in the water. You like it. It's too cold for you, leave. And if you like it, jump in and swim across the pool for another nine months. And come out like these young men and women are going to be coming out today. So there's nothing to lose. There is absolutely nothing to lose. Join for one month. And if you like it, finish it. Otherwise, you know, no questions asked. Right? And if you like it, then move on from the pool to the river. Or you want, you know, which is the Alim program. And once you graduate from that, then it's an ocean. Our ulama will tell you. You just keep on swimming till you die. Keep on worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until uh, death comes upon you. So let us take this opportunity right now. I know you're feeling it. You're going to see the boys and girls graduating. You're going to look at these lucky moms and dads whose sons and daughters are graduating and say, I want my son to do it. Don't wait tomorrow. Do it now. Go out in the kiosk. Register for the summer intensive. Ask me questions. Ask Brother Jamal there, mashallah, and all the other sisters who are on the sister side who've got questions, who've, who've got answers for you. And we hope, inshallah ta'ala, we will also welcome a beautiful new batch uh, in the coming year. If you haven't already registered, may I request you to do so, please? This is not for cost purposes, but this is simply for us to be able to have a method of communicating. We love to communicate with you. We hope that you do as well. We love to be in touch with you. So if you want to receive text messages from us, or email updates, kindly uh, register. If you're listening on live stream, just text message us at 630-360-2373 or the masjid number, 630-360-2373 with your email address. And inshallah ta'ala, you'll be added onto the listserv. I have uh, taken a lot of time from all of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for your patience. Uh, and uh, we will inshallah ta'ala now, um, although is, is uh, Brother Jamal, is, is food ready? Are you ready to go? You find out, inshallah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So maybe even if, uh, if as they are preparing, well, how are we going to go outside now? If those of you who are joining us for our first meal, please do not wear your shoes. Leave your shoes out. Yes. Okay. So the. Um, the, uh, the, 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 the shoes are to be left on the side and we're supposed to just walk without our shoes there and there's a water, pla uh, a water bottle there to wash our hands. You wash your hands and you'll go into the main tent. The ulama, there's lunch for them. You sure? Subhanallah. Okay. Um, uh, the, 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 lunch for them will be provided on the, uh, on the left side hall over here, inshallah. Muhammad Patel? Do I have Hafiz Muhammad Patel over here? I'll ask, inshallah, if we can go through the uh, uh, madrasa anthem, inshallah, right now. Hafiz Muhammad Patel or Yasin. Yasin. Yeah. 
these were scheduled to go after. You know, subhanAllah, my door partner, Hafiz Iqbal is my door partner. He told me a story. If, uh, uh, he said, well, one, uh, uh, he, was, he was regarding one, uh, one Hafiz, one, uh, a very, very strong Hafiz. He was living Trawi or Shabina, no mistakes. Entire Quran. And then he comes to Qulu Allah Wahad and he gets stuck. This is the margins of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, hey, listen, don't, don't get yourself to your head, you know? You're still a human being. You're still f- full of mistakes. Qulu Allah Wahad. I remember myself, I made mistakes in, in uh, uh, Surah Al Qadr, Kafirun, in Tarawi. You know, it happens. I'm sure our ulama can say the same thing. So this is the last hiccup is, uh, is in our last event here that the food has just been delayed. Alhamdulillah, so far this has never been happened from our previous retreats ever. So, but inshallah, you'll get sabr for, uh, for a reward for that. I'm going to ask um, um, Yasin here, inshallah ta'ala, whose um, uh, parents, proud parents are here with us today. Uh, Dr. Najib and his wife and his uh, children. Mashallah, his grandparents are present here as well. Um, and he will be sharing, inshallah ta'ala, his experiences um, to the program. I've got so many things to say about Yasin, but uh, I will, inshallah, allow him to come and uh, speak himself. May I ask the students of the lobby, volunteers as well, inshallah, to join us here. Zakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah, Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, amma ba'd. Faqad qad Allahu ta'ala li Musa alayhi salam, sana shuddu adudaka bi akhik. Faqala rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna al-mu'mina li mu'mini, inna al-mu'mina li mu'mini kal bunyani yashuddu ba'duhu ba'da. Rawahu al-Bukhari, sadaqa Allah al-Azim, wa sadaqa rasulahu al-Nabiyu al-Kareem. First and foremost, I would like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving me this incredible opportunity to study for one year, an opportunity many wish to have but are unable to attain. I would like to thank every person who has influenced my life and shaped me into who I am today. The road does not end here, but alhamdulillah, I feel more confident with my faith, and inshallah, I now stand on solid ground. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Prophet Musa alayhi salam, I will strengthen you with your brother. The believers are like the bricks of a wall, each lending strength to another. Each has their own special place, individual role, and each one of them is significant in their own way. They are far stronger together than they are individually. The strongest level of brotherhood and sisterhood is a sense of community, friendship, and common purpose for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At this level, the believers work together towards fulfilling the goals of our faith and living out its divine values. When we help our brothers and sisters in Islam, in reality, we are helping ourselves. When we pray for them, the angels pray for us. And when we have mercy with them, Allah has mercy with us. Fulfilling the rights of brotherhood and sisterhood in Islam is a means for Allah to support us and reward us in the hereafter. Failing our brothers and sisters in Islam results in the possibility of Allah withdrawing his support. This brotherhood was one of the greatest takeaways from my time here at Dar es Salaam. Through this one year, I have become a part of the Dar es Salaam community. No matter where I may go in this world, my heart will always be connected. We will always stand together, just like in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. His companions were all unique and came from different backgrounds. One was an Abyssinian slave, one was a wealthy and highly regarded figure of the Quraysh, and yet another one was one who at one point was feared by all of the believers. And what was it that brought them all together? It was their Iman. Dar es Salaam is a microcosm of that brotherhood, that ummah that was seen at the time of the Prophet wasallam, that grew into a vast and beautiful Islamic civilization. What this program has done is it has acquired some of the great qualities from the society of the Prophet wasallam and brought it into our own community, creating an environment that nurtures those, nurtures those bonds of brotherhood. Just one year ago, it was I who was sitting in the audience, curious about the Dar es Salaam one year program. I never could have imagined that I would be up here talking to all of you now. But here I am, having spent a year with countless hours of enlightenment and having built strong relationships with incredible scholars like Mufti Minhaj, Mufti Azim, Mufti Azaz, Mawlana Ahtaram, Mawlana Musaib, Mawlana Yaqub and Sheikh Ali. 
I thank them all for putting up with our group this past year, and I, uh, I never understood true sabr until I saw how these teachers handle us. May Allah reward them all immensely. Taking a moment to look past all these beautiful re relationships I gained between my classmates and my teachers, the most valuable and important relationship I strengthened and developed this year was my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love for our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nearly every day for the entire year, we had a sirah class where we not only learned and discussed the entire life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but we learned to truly, truly love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because now we truly knew him. When our wonderful and knowledgeable teacher Mufti Azaz completed our sirah book, and when he discussed the demise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you could feel the sadness and see the tears in many of my classmates' eyes. You could sense the heaviness and the pain in the room. Our teachers put so much emotion and passion into these classes that we as students could not help but feel the effect of their words every day in our hearts. Every one of these classes in the program have helped me become more firm in my faith. The three Arabic grammar classes have provided the ability for me to navigate these different texts written in Arabic with no diacritical marks. The benefit of these three classes finally hit me in late fall, early winter during Aisha Salah. Mufti Minhaj recited a series of ayat, and I realized that I completely understood what was being read. I can honestly say that this was one of the most significant benefits I've taken away from this program, understanding much of what is being said in Salah. Alhamdulillah, I even understand 81% of the Quran, 1% more than the student who gave the speech last year. And if you haven't heard that, you can find it on the Dar Salaam YouTube channel. In all seriousness, because of this program, I felt that a whole new world had opened up to me. I credit Dar Salaam and its teachers for the huge impact it has had on me. Mufti Minhaj was our Nahu and Fiqh of marriage teacher. He's known in class for being very educated in all aspects of knowledge. And he uses that education, history, science, etc., to answer all of our questions. Mufti Azim, who taught our Arabic literature class, in which we cover a book written entirely in Arabic called Qasas al Nabiyin. And I will miss his line in that class where he says, Mafum, whenever he asks if we understood. And, when he, and then he also taught us Tazkia, where I have learned basic adab, which includes which foot to put, my, put in my shoe first and the respectful way to hold my books. Thanks to Mufti Minhaj and Mufti Azim, I find myself still standing in Salah while everyone else is in Rukur because I'm trying to finish up the Turkib of the previous ayah. Mufti Azaz taught our fiqh class, and he was so patient with my questions, despite me being Shafri in a Hanafi fiqh class. And his Sira class, as mentioned before, Mufti Azaz taught us to truly love the Prophet Mulana Hadaram, who taught us conversational Arabic from the book Kirat al Arabiya, and oftentimes during class we would ask the most off topic questions, and he would quote passages from books that he has memorized in order to answer the questions. Mulana Musayb, who taught us sarf, step by step, fiqh of zakat. There was one side of Mulana Musayb where he would give us a taste of true pain after forcing us to do squats for not knowing our material. And also the pages upon pages of sarf gurdans that we would have to write to the point where we would dream about fa'ala, fa'ala, fa'alu. Then there was the other side of him where he would hit us with the most powerful and inspirational words that would leave us in a daze. Thanks to him, I will forever strive to be like a camel, not an elephant. <laughs> Sheikh Ali, also known as the reliable Sheikh Google, taught us misunderstood verses, a class that helps us understand ayat that are constantly under fire uh, by Islamophobes. And then Sheikh Yaqub, my dear Shafri teacher, who took the time out of his schedule to teach us few Shafri students three periods each day this past month so that we could finish our book. And to the other teachers who us students did not get the opportunity to learn under, your presence was enough to have an effect on our hearts. All these teachers have changed me in ways I never would have imagined. In fact, in ways some of my friends from back home never would have imagined either. Just a few months ago, I was attending a monthly seminar here in the masjid and the room was packed. I received several texts from a friend I haven't seen in two years. I looked down and saw that he had sent two pictures of myself sitting in the seminar, excitingly saying he found my twin here at Dar es Salaam. I then broke it to him that it was in fact me, now with facial hair, a thobe, and a turban. This year was greatly enhanced by all of my unique classmates. A beautiful special bond is built when 20 or more students are crowded around a single bowl of delicious biryani and butter chicken. 
Now, one of the advantages to having a smaller class is everyone gets to know each other well, and sometimes a little bit too well. I'd like to take a moment to address my brothers who spent countless hours with me for an entire year in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aman Siddiqui, the mashallah genius student who was caught talking in every single class, every single day of the entire school year. Mustafa Ali, one of the most spiritual people I have ever met and one who gives the whole new meaning to the hadith, la yizalu lisanuka rotban min dhikrillah. Jabber Harris, the man who drops bars like no other, literally, Nutri-grain bars, granola bars. Usman Ahmed, the emir of the class who had zero authority, <laughs> yet everyone loved like a brother. Tayyib Ahmed, the man whose house I ship all my packages to, and he gives amazing back massages as well. Omar Khan, child prodigy, that somehow knows more than the entire class combined and is good at everything. Hazim Al Khan, bird fanatic with a phobia of, well, a lot of things, especially biryani. Shiraz Hassan, the student who halfway through the year decided to become Shafri and join my Shafri fit class. Osama Rayyan, the student who gave me haircuts throughout the year and then would admire my head the next day and praise himself for his great work. Shazain, who left his speedway two minutes before the class began so he could fill his car with gas, and then came 20 minutes late and attempted to prove it to Molana Musaib why, why he should have had enough time by working out the math. Umer, the one who thinks that hiding behind the teacher's computer is enough to get, keep him from getting caught sleeping. Norman, the one who, whenever absent, we would assume was at medical school. Raja Umer, the student who has gotten in incredible shape, mashallah, due to the hundreds of squats he had to do for getting vocabulary words wrong. Anas Ali, the student who can read the entire story of Yusuf alayhi salam in Arabic in President Obama's voice. Omar Osman, the student who walked into class with a raccoon hat and tried to convince the teachers he was fulfilling the sunnah of the topi. Omar Ahmed, ping pong and nahu fanatic, and the legend who asked for four different drinks while being hosted by Mufti Azim. <laughs> Jibril Khan, the talented artist who has never taken off his topi, not even while sleeping. Hashir Jamalvi, the excellent student, uh, the excellent driver who rear-ended me and was later caught on security cameras and called out by Mufti Azim in the middle of my tafsir class. Musa Khatak, the one who sprints up the stairs at the beginning of our 15-minute break, speeds home to his house, which is 10 minutes away, and somehow expects to be back in time for class. Yusuf Rashid, the fashion icon. Need I say more? Maz Qureshi, the student who thought I was a convert until an hour ago. <laughs> Jokes aside, these students are the ones I think of when I hear the hadith, خِيَارُكُمْ الَّذِينَ إِذَا رُؤُوا Allah. The best of you are those who remind, whose sight reminds one of Allah. They have made me smile, laugh, think, and cry throughout this school year, and they've always looked out for me. I'm standing up here in front of you, wearing a turban that was gifted by one of my classmates and tied by another classmate. I was even given a back massage by one of my classmates before coming up here. You really don't find this brotherhood anywhere else here but Dar es Salaam. I've learned invaluable lessons from them like adab, the manners, the importance of surrounding yourself with good people, and the technique needed to eat biryani with three fingers. Pile, scoop, push. Dar es I will truly miss you. I was walking up the stairs with Molana Musaib a couple days ago, and he asked me why I've looked down and upset these past few days. I covered it up by sm smiling and telling him that I was in fact extremely happy, as I had tied my turban myself that day and it looked beautiful. But in reality, as the, days of my, uh, as the days of my time here at Dar es Salaam wound down, I found my heart becoming heavier and heavier. I found myself walking slower, taking in the beauty of the masjid I called home for 300 days. As I thought about this past year, I tried to put, my, put a finger on what I would miss the most. Maybe it's our Thursday night gatherings where we sit together and read salawat on the Prophet Or maybe the Thursday nights when students race to each the car group reminding everyone to read Surah Kaf in order to get the reward of reminding them. Or maybe it's my Monday morning walks with Mufti Azim, where he'd allow me to open up to him and ask him any questions I wished. You will always have a special place in my heart. 
I will miss praying all of my salah in the masjid. Excuse me, I will, ha- I will miss having the opportunity to pray all the salah in this masjid. I will miss the beauty of this, the, I will miss the beautiful sound of the adhan resonating through the hallways, calling me to the masallah. I will miss the cold wudu water and the Kit Kats in the vending machine. I will miss our competitive ping pong matches where I used to destroy all of my classmates. I will miss the squats and push ups Molana Musay forced us to do when we would answer a question wrong. I will miss the apartment life with my brothers, in the days when six of us are crowded around one stove, each rushing to cook their own meal, sweating as we try to count the minutes as to whether we have time to catch the law and eat the food we just prepared before class began. I will miss my conversations with one of the most beautiful individuals in the madrasa, even though at times I feel as if he knows more Arabic than me, my friend Juan, the man who keeps his masjid clean. I will miss the roasting from the teachers, as well as the smiles and motivational comments. I will miss sitting in the masjid after Fajr, reading Quran loudly with several other students until falling asleep on the soft floor of this now familiar masjid. I will miss this community. I will miss this family. After a full year, full year here at Dar es Salaam, I think of it as my home, a beautiful place where I can always find a listening ear, a beautiful lesson, and perfect tranquility. My last words to my fellow students is that the journey absolutely does not end here. We've been given our means, our boat, and oars in order to sail on this journey, and the waves will be calm and peaceful at times, and violent and scary at other times. We must always remember to come back to that place that keeps us anchored down, the masjid. May Allah bless each of you in your endeavors. To my teachers, may Allah bless you beyond measure. You have given us the tools for success in this dunya and the akhirah, and we ask Allah to make us worthy of that responsibility. To my parents, mom and baba, I am always in need of your dua. Thank you for being such great role models and always emphasizing the beauty and dignity of our deen and for encouraging me to take this journey at Dar es Salaam this past year. My life has been enriched beyond measure. And finally, I like to thank all of you, the audience, for participating in our graduation. I reached the end of my final assignment of this year here at Dar es Salaam, and I wish I could go on and postpone this year from inevitably ending. But I have high hopes that we will all meet together in Jannah, inshallah. Ya ayyuha al-asatidatul ahibba, shukran lakum. Wa ya ikhwatil a'izza alladhina ta'allamu ma'ay fi hadha al-barnamij, shukran lakum. Wa ya ayyuha al-tullab al-ajilla fi dar al-salam, shukran lakum. Shukran ala taghiri hayati. جزاكم الله خير وبارك الله فيكم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين If you didn't understand the jokes you have to join the next year's program inshallah and you will understand the jokes of next year Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Hopefully inshallah we are refreshed and uh, are ready to inshallah participate in the last final leg of this beautiful journey the past two days. Uh, this is the long-awaited uh, day for students, for parents, for the community to witness this. We ask the brothers uh, outside in the lobbies, in the halls, to please make their way into the masjid, inshallah. The brothers were outside by the canteen, by the tent. I know they can't hear me, but if there are some brothers in the lobby who can invite them in, appreciate that. Let them know, inshallah, that the program is beginning. We are so blessed in so many ways. And one of those ways, mashallah, how the uh, weather was supposed, forecast was to be a rainy and cloudy today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it such a beautiful sunny day for us to enjoy eating outside and socializing and enjoying each other's company. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always keep us happy and together in this world and allow us to be also enjoy this type of company tomorrow in Jannah to Al-Firdaus. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen. Before um, we move forward, inshallah, we would like to begin this session with a recitation and a rendering from the Qur'an, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we will start with uh, Hafiz uh, Ammar Uthman, inshallah, uh, who is also gra- uh, a Hifz graduate of this institution. Many years back he graduated, mashallah, from the Hifz al-Qur'an. And uh, today he's graduating from the one-year program. And we will ask him, inshallah ta'ala, to come and recite a passage of the Qur'an.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم صدق الله العظيم Takbir, mashallah. Zakum Allah khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow all our hafaz to be connected with the Quran and continue to recite it beautifully in Salatul Taraweeh as well as throughout the year. Ameen. One important announcement for the sisters um, that I know some sisters were uh, unable to eat because we uh, did not anticipate, mashallah ta'ala, this many guests and the food. Uh, we, we have arranged some and some more is coming as well. So please uh, don't worry, inshallah, before you leave. Uh, there will be food in the kitchen for you, as, and the volunteers and the leads will assist you in, in, in taking you there. But we want to ensure that all our guests, men and women, uh, leave today not only having eaten uh, from the ghiva uh, and the, uh, the, the, the badani ghiva, the food, but also taking the full spiritual benefit of this program. Second announcement for the sisters is that uh, those who are wit wanting to witness uh, the sisters' parallel graduation, mothers of the girls graduating, etc., 
they can uh, they will be downstairs and those mothers who would like to participate and listen into the uh, boys graduation whether it's hevd or a one year program the upstairs hall is uh, going to be unmuted and you're going to be listening to what's going on in this hall as for the downstairs that's the separate uh, graduation taking place jazakallah khair um, another announcement here that uh, you know we are about freedom, right? We, are, we talk about freedom, freedom of rights and human rights. We've been talking about that. And we talk about respecting each other's privacy and respecting each other's uh, views and whatnot. We had Mufti Muhammad ibn Adam said, inshallah, he's going to be coming up with a book on the uh, uh, etiquettes of social media and WhatsApp. So one of the issues we have nowadays is that people do not respect each other's privacy and they take pictures and videos of public gatherings where people who don't want to be in the picture and video and are broadcasted all over social media, who people who don't want to be part of your life that you're presenting outside. So I have received many requests from the students besides my own requests, but from many students who said that they do not want to be in anyone's pictures and videos. So please respect um, their privacy, my privacy, as well as um, the privacy of many who are, who are present here. If that's something you want to do for your own son or daughter, that's, that's between you and yourself and them, it's fine. But we please, we ask you to, inshallah, keep in mind of the other brothers and sisters who um, don't want to be, uh, who's, who's picked, who don't want their pictures to be taken. Jazakumullah khaira. Next, inshallah ta'ala, we'll invite Hafiz Ammar, but not Uthman, Hafiz Ammar Ahmad, who is also a graduate of the Hivs program here, and is graduating also from the one-year program today. But he's also, mashallah, continuing on to the second year, and hopefully many more years after that. He will be... Uh, presenting a speech in, in the Arabic, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi alladhi a'la ma'alim al-ilmi wa'alama. وأظهر شعائر الشرع وأحكامه وبعث رسلا وأنبياء صلوات الله عليهم أجمعين إلى سبيل الحق هادين وأخلفهم علماء إلى سنن سننهم داعين يسلكون فيما لم يؤثر عنهم مسلك الإجتهاد مسترشدين منه في ذلك وهو ولي الإرشاد أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد هو الذي بعث في الأميين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وقال تعالى قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون إنما يتذكر أولو الألباب وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من سلك طريقا يلتمس فيه علما سهل الله له طريقا إلى الجنة رواه ترمذي أما بعد أيها العلماء السادة وطلاب العلم الأحبة والمستمعون العزة إنه لشرف كبير لي أن أقف الآن بين أيديكم في مسجد دار السلام لإلقاء كلمة المتواضعة في هذه الفرصة السعيدة التي لا تتوفر أمثالها للإجتماع بمثل هذه المجموعة الطيبة من العلماء وطلاب العلم والمسلمين الصالحين حضرات السادة اعلموا أن أول معلم للإنسان الذي خلق من علق هو الله جل جلاله علمه الله بالقلم وعلم الإنسان ما لم يعلم ثم أقام سبحانه وتعالى سيدنا محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم للأميين ثم لغيرهم فعلمهم الكتاب الكريم والحكمة وهي السنة المطهرة كما قال تعالى هو الذي بعث في الأميين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين 
ثم أقام سبحانه وتعالى من أحبهم من جميع المسلمين فتفضل عليهم فعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وفقههم في الدين وعلمهم التأويل وفضلهم على سائر المسلمين وذلك في كل زمان وحين الملائكة بأجنحتها لهم تخضع وهم يوم القيامة بعد الأنبياء يشفعون ومجالستهم تفيد الحكمة وبأعمالهم ينزجر أهل الغفلة حياتهم غنيمة وموتهم مصيبة يذكرون الغافل ويعلمون الجاهل هم ورثة الأنبياء وقرة عين الأولياء هم أفضل من العباد كما ورد في الحديث الشريف عن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقيه واحد أشد على الشيطان من ألف عابد أيها السادة العلماء في أهل الأرض هداة مرشدون للخلق على الحق سبحانه وهم زينة لأهل الأرض وهم كذلك رجوم لشياطين الإنس دعاة الضلالة يقومون في وجوههم ويحولون بينهم وبين عامة المسلمين أن يشوشوا عليهم دينهم فالناس تغشاهم ظلمات الجهل وظلمات الضلال ونور العلماء قاشع ماح لكليهما كما أن نور العلماء كان من قبل ماحيا لظلمات الكفر وظلمات الجهل قال سيدنا علي رضي الله تعالى عنه ما الفخر إلا لأهل العلم إنهم على الهدى لمن استهدى أدلاء وقدر كل امرئ ما كان يحسنه والجاهلون لأهل العلم أعداء ففز بعلم تعش حيا به أبدا الناس موتى وأهل العلم أحياء فبالعلم شرف آدم وبه استحق سجود الملائكة ومن هنا والله أعلم كان احترام متوارث من الملائكة الكرام لطالب العلم إذ تضع أجنحتها استرضاء منهم لطالب العلم كما هو معلوم من الحديث المشهور من سلك طريقا يبتغي فيه علما سلك الله به طريقا إلى الجنة وإن الملائكة لتضع أجنحتها رضاء لطالب العلم وهذا الإكرام الإلهي صالح للاستدلال به هنا على فضل العلم كما هو صالح للاستدلال به على فضل العلماء أيها المستمعون الأكارم نحن الآن في هذا العصر الراهن المملوء بالفتن محتاجون إلى طلب العلوم الدينية للخروج من ظلمات الفتن إلى نور الهدى قبل عشرة أشهر وصلت إلى دار السلام للبرنامج السنوي الذي أتخرج منه اليوم والحمد لله تعالى بهذا البرنامج المبارك تعلمت كيف أنال رضوان الله تعالى وأرجو أن أنتفع بهذه العلوم الدينية التي تعلمتها في هذا البرنامج المبارك طول حياتي والآن أنا أوصيكم بالالتحاق بمدرسة دينية وأن ترسلوا أولادكم إليها لطلب العلوم الدينية في عطلة السيف الآتية أو في وقتكم الفارغ وإن كان ليوم أو يومين في الأسبوع وأيضا أنا أوصيكم ونفسي بموعظة الإمام الشافعي عن شرائط حصول العلم أخي لن تنال العلم إلا بستة سأنبئك عن تفصيلها ببياني ذكاء وحرص واجتهاد وبلغة وصحبة أستاذ وطول زماني وأخيرا أسأل الله تعالى أن يوفقنا لطلب العلم وأن يفقهنا في الدين وأن يرزقنا العلم النافع وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله خيرا Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to implement those beautiful words um, 
of ilm and the encouragement for ourselves and our children to dedicate some time to seeking knowledge. For indeed, the, the true virtue is for the one who knows. And the one who knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the one who knows Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At the end of the day, what is the purpose of us learning here? Is to simply understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to know what He wants from us. This ma'rifa is the key, uh, uh, the, the key to and the success. And we hope and we beg to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He grants us this ma'rifa before we leave this world. Amin Rabbil Alameen. Next, I invite uh, Brother Farhan Ahmad, uh, who is part of the uh, first batch of students that graduated five years ago. And alhamdulillah, uh, he is, uh, he's, he's, con he's continued his studies at many, in, in, in many institutions, currently a student at Dalar Qasim. And he's uh, uh, finished his degree in psychology, and he also serves as a therapist at Khalil Center. Um, and many of you know him from Halal Advocates and other places as well, mashallah. So I'll ask him to uh, come and share a perspective five years later from an alumnus of this school. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi minash shaytan rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Was salatu was salam ala rasulhin kareem. First and foremost, I want to thank my teachers for giving me this opportunity to speak to you all about my perspective, looking back five years later, um, about my time here and what I have learned. You know, I really appreciate this opportunity because I never got to explain to them how much it really changed my life studying here at Dar es Salaam. And not only, you know, uh, it just changed it drastically, right? Malan Tamim yesterday was talking about the Muslim identity. And I'll go more into that, how that it developed my mind, right, and made me think as a Muslim. See, when a majority of us have been to college, are in college, or will go to college, right? I mean, looking at the demographics of this uh, majma right here, we see that majority of them are desis, right? So it's in our DNA, basically, right? And when we look at what university we're going to attend, we, there's specific criteria that we look for, right? Every school, they have biology, chemistry, I, like some IT course, or engineering. So basically, the, some of the mo a majority of these uh, universities have a lot of the same degrees, programs. But then there are special criteria that we actually look at, which makes us eliminate some schools and then choose other schools. So for instance, some people look at the prestige of the school. Some people look at the location where it's located. Some people look at the extracurricular activities. How good is the basketball team? Is it a big football school? You know, um, and et cetera, et cetera. So it is these specific criteria which distinguish certain schools from others, right? And that is what I want to talk about today is what distinguishes Dar es Salaam for me from other places? What is it about Dar es Salaam that made me fall in love with this school, right? I was talking to a fellow colleague that they were going to go to Loyola. I also went to Loyola for a year. Um, and what happened was that I said that, why are you going to Loyola? Like, what, what's your end goal? They told me they want to become a dentist. I said, okay, that's great, you want to be a dentist, but why do you want to pay $40,000 a year to go there? you know, $40,000 a year, and then on top of that, you're gonna to have to go to dental school and pay another X amount of money. And they told me that the reason that they're going there was because there was a specific program which they do not offer at UIC or Benedictine or other colleges, but also because of the location of the school. It was right on the beach, right? So that was their specific criteria of why they picked Loyola. So similarly, there are certain things about Dar es Salaam which so really stood out to me, alhamdulillah. I was blessed to be able to study here in 2012, and then I went on for another two years studying part-time while I was doing my master's, alhamdulillah. And so one of the things that really stood, up, stood out, and you heard it in uh, Yasin's speech earlier, is the brotherhood. The brotherhood and the sense of belonging. I cannot emphasize that enough because as a therapist, you know, a lot of people come into our office and, you know, they're depressed, 
you know, they don't feel like they belong. They're looking for a love. They're looking for a sense of belonging, whether that's from their parents, from their spouses, from somebody else, right? And they feel lonely. But over here, alhamdulillah, you see the brotherhood. You see it from all the students, from everybody from, you know, the first year all the way to the fifth year. You see how they're interconnected, how, you know, they go on trips together, how they spend so much time together. And this is the manifestation of what Mufti Saab and the teachers have done over here, right? Is that they took out their time to bring us all together. They just don't say, you know, all you uh, students hang out and everything. They actually hang out with us. They bring us together and they make us all feel belong, feel loved, right? And I can't, uh, to me, that's one of the biggest things, like, as a person growing up, I mean, we always want to feel loved. Everybody wants to feel loved. And when you actually see that and you feel that from the teachers, that's something different. That's a different feeling. Anybody that's married knows, you know, like what it means to be loved, right? Or anybody that's a child, a parent, they know what that means. Right? Alhamdulillah. So unfortunately, some people don't, but that sense of belonging, right? We would go on three-day trips, a.k.a. Jamaat, right? And we would go... Uh, at all these extracurricular activities, going on field trips together with the teachers, camping trips, you know, overnight staying at the masjid. I mean, we were at the warehouse, but as the years progressed, we were here and we overnight, you know, playing mafia late night all the way to fudger, you know, playing ping pong, playing all these different things. You know, the midnight stories, right? Our share, them sharing the stories, the walks after fudger. It was amazing, mashallah. And the best part of it was... Uh, at the end of the year, one was the barbecue by Mufti Azaz, for sure. And then the other thing was we would be able to, we would go to extreme trampoline, right? And that was our time to be able to take our frustration out on the teachers by dodgeball, alhamdulillah. <laughs> so, for all the hard exams, but I'm just kidding. But I mean, that sense of belonging, alhamdulillah, that's the number one thing, one of the biggest things that stood out to me from here. Then, second thing is the, asp the tarbiya aspect. A lot of people, you know, like Mufti Saab was saying earlier today, is that they look at these students and they're like, oh, you know, they probably came from religious families, their father was a tabligi, their father was an alim, some, et cetera, et cetera. But that's far from the truth. You know, like I could tell you personally from me, my own story. I came from a small town, Springfield, Ohio, where there was only 45 Muslim families. I was, there was only three kids my age. All my friends were non-Muslims, black, white people, you know, and where I came from, being 10 minutes to go to the masjid was too far, right? Mixing men and women, as long as you didn't have a girlfriend, totally permissible. All of these things, only the person that would wear hijab in the, was the imam's wife. She was the only one that wore hijab. So where we came from, it was, deen was basically non-existent, right? It was non-existent. Our mentality was the mentality of everybody else's. That, you know, when I first came here and I saw an Aqabi sister, I got scared myself. I was like, oh, whoa, whoa, hold up, what's going on, you know? It, that's how bad it was. But alhamdulillah, Allah Ta'ala guided me to study a little bit. But I was still confused, right? I came here, you know, in my, when I was uh, 22 years old. I was married. I had my child two months before, you know. Um, I was starting my master's program. And it was a very difficult time because, like, my dad, like, he loved us so much. He wanted us to become a doctor like him and everything. But he wasn't very supportive of us studying because he wanted us to, you know, be, follow in his footsteps, right? And it was a very difficult path that I had to take, alhamdulillah, but Allah facilitated the ease. And being here really changed my life, honestly. It really changed my life. It made me actually think like a Muslim, right? Not only did it make me think like a Muslim, it gave me the tools to be able to use now in Khalil Center to help other Muslims, right? Because we... Uh, bridge the gap between uh, Islamic sciences and psychology. And where did I learn that from? Here, alhamdulillah, because of the mentality that Mufti Saab and the teachers, they uh, installed, instilled within us. And not only that, I mean, it's not just the physical form, right? It, the, yeah, mashallah, we're wearing beards, we have a beard, with topi, all of this stuff, but it's the mentality of a Muslim that's really important, alhamdulillah. And, you know, and they didn't do it through a danda or anything like a stick, they did it through love. And that's super important, is through love. Because a lot of times you get, you know, you hear these stories of people getting beaten and, you know, to, to conform and everything like that. But that is a temporary. They're doing it out of fear. 
But when you do it, when, you, when people are showing you love and you change out of love, that's everlasting. That's the thing. I have so many stories when I came in. Yes, you know, Mufti Saab would like sit down with me and talk to me and I would do a lot of things uh, that wasn't really appropriate, you know? And they would explain it to me. They would take me to the sign and tell me, Farhan, you know, this is why you shouldn't do X, Y, Z. And I would get upset sometimes because I was 22 years old. I was like, man, I'm a father. You know, who are you to tell me in my mind, right? But looking back at it, I'm like so thankful that they did that because not only did it make me a better father, it made me a better husband, and it made me a better son. And to the point that alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, from the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one day I was walking out of madrasa uh, and my dad calls me, right? My dad calls me. And he's like, you know, beta, um, He's like, I'm really proud of you. I was like, whoa, what's going on? He's like, I'm really happy. I've seen how you've changed throughout these years. You know, you, be, you were an angry kid. You did all of these things. But now, you know, you're becoming a man. You're, you know, you're taking care of your family. You're doing all these things. And your akhlaq and your adab and all that has changed. And that's only from my teachers. I promise you, that's only from my teachers. How they instilled that within us how they made us humans. They took us from these raw animals and at least made us somewhat human, alhamdulillah. And that's because of their dua and their dedication. And that leads me to the third and most important point of what makes Dar Salaam so unique is the teachers that are teaching here. Because they're just not teachers. They're not just nine to five, you know. You know, you go to school, you go to university, you go to colleges and everything like that, and the teachers are just there for their class time, right? But they're putting in that extra effort. They're sacrificing their family time, their kids, everything for us. They're making us, what, their own kids. So many times they would spend with us, take us out, do things with us, and that is meaningful. You know, we're infatuated with knowledge. We're infatuated by knowledge, right? We're like, oh, everybody got to be educated and, you know, even studying books and everything like that. But they brought out that knowledge they, in their akhlaq, their adab and everything. And we were able to take from that, alhamdulillah. And we were able to see that because we're observational learners, right? We see, we learn by observing others. And we got to see up close how it is, how the teachers act. And then we could do the same thing with others, alhamdulillah. And that's why it's so important. It's just not, you know, anybody could teach, right? And we probably all have teachers that were very terrible teachers and everything. But alhamdulillah, over here, the teachers are very unique. They know how to teach, and that's very important. And they know how to adapt to the ch child. Even Mufti Azaz, you know, mashallah, he would study books on how to teach. You know, that's how, to the extent that they're trying to imp uh, make us learn. And that's what makes Dar Salaam so unique is the teachers themselves of how they take us as their own children. They don't see us as any different. Yes, in the classroom, what there are teachers, but outside of the classroom, there are brothers. And, you know, even to this day, like, yeah, I don't study here. I study at a different madrasa and everything. But, you know, I feel so connected with this madrasa still. You know, Mufti Saab is always asking me, hey, what are you doing? You know, uh, texting me here and there. And then we have a WhatsApp group where all the teachers are actually active on there, which is a big thing, you know, and um, just being able to spend one-on-one -on -one timing whenever I need it, they're always there for me. So, you know, these are the main things. There's so many more things that I could go on about what makes Dar Salaam unique. But what makes it unique, I want to summarize, is the sense of belongingness that everybody's looking for, the love that the teachers give you the, and the students they bring together. Number two, the tarbi aspect of it, right? Forming a mentality, you know, akhlaq, adab, finding that Muslim identity. And number three is the teachers themselves, which is the biggest thing. So I want to ask, first and foremost, my teachers for forgiveness for all the foolishness that I've done over the years and I continue to do. And um, I want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continuously create the muhabba and love between us because that's something I really cherish. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله جزاكم الله خيرا. I remember uh, I remember the emotional uh, uh, moment when my Ustad Hazrat Mawlana Suleiman Chuksi Saab after teaching Sahih Muslim to us in the final year of Dora Hadith. And, and on the day when he finished the book, he was making dua and he said, Mawlana Saab, Kal Kiamat Kidin Agartum Chuksi ko Pasewe Dekogena. 
کو ہاتھ پکڑ کر آگے لے جانا اللہ اکبر ہی سر مائی اسٹوڈنٹس ایف یو سی سلیمان چوکس از اسٹک آن دا ری آف ججمنٹ پلیز ہیو مرسی این می اینڈ ریمبر سم گڈنیس دیٹ آئی شیئر ود یو ہولڈ مائی ہینڈز اینڈ ٹیک می این سبحان اللہ سو دس از آل آئی کین سی ٹو آور اسٹوڈنٹس پاس اینڈ پریزنٹ دا واللہ وی آر فل 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 آف فالس اینڈ شور کمنگس اینڈ وی ہوپ اینڈ وی پرے دیٹ یو ول موو گو وے بی آن ڈس اینڈ ناٹ اونلی ول بی اے سورس آف ہیپینیس ٹوڈے فار اس بٹ ٹمارو آن دا ری آف ججمنٹ وی ول وین وی ول نیڈ یو دا موسٹ ان شاء اللہ یو ول بی دیر فار اس امین رب العالمین I'm going to ask, inshallah ta'ala, and now the students, uh, every year we have an annual uh, skit, which is based on some aspect of deen, of course, and it's, a, it's, a, it's meant to be humorous as well, a little bit, and it's, moment, it's, a, uh, it's an idea of also learning something, inshallah, so I'll ask them come for, uh, to, to, to set up, and may I request the brothers in the back to come, there's a lot of space in front, please, please move forward. Please fill in the gaps, move forward. People are still coming in. Many people will be coming in for the dua as well, etc. from other programs. So we can sit, clo- uh, f- move forward. May I respect Mawlana Ihtaram, uh, may I ask Mawlana Ihtaram, Mawlana Yaqub Sahab, Mawlana Musayyib, Mawlana Ifdal, Mufti Ma Abdul Hannan, Mufti Abdul Mannan, kindly please come forward. Mawlana Sheikh Ali, Mufti Riyaz, all the other ulama that are here. MashaAllah. Minhum man qasasna alayka, minhum man naqsusa alayka. Whoever is there, please come. MashaAllah. You need this mic? So I'll invite uh, Shazin, inshallah, who is be the narrator of this um, skit, inshallah. Bismillah. Bismillah rahman rahim Scene one. It was a scorching morning as people gathered from around the Persian Gulf. For some, it was a routine sail around the sea. For others, it was soon to be a glorifying and memorable first experience. All right, have your tickets ready. The sooner we get done with this, the sooner we can all go home. All right, next. All right, tickets, please. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. There's a maintenance problem, captain's problem. Uh, just give me one second, sir. Sabul Muslimi, Kal Mushrifi, Ala Al Halakati. Whoever harms a Muslim is like the one heading towards his own destruction. Subhanallah, I've heard the hadith before. It has a beautiful meaning behind it. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, my name is Sadiq. Wa alaikum assalam, Sadiq, I'm Muhammad. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Scene one, cut. Scene two, action. So Muhammad, share something else with me. That hadith really got me thinking about my past and how to change. Alhamdulillah, of course I can share something with you, Brother Sadiq. So my teacher once told me that this world is like a boat, similar to the one that we're currently on right now. And this boat, we use it to travel around the world. And however, if this boat, if it was to have a leak and water were to get inside this boat, then essentially this boat would be useless. Similarly, this world, if we don't use it to get to our ultimate destination, if we don't use it to get to Jannah, then oh. it's too useless. Whoa, 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 are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. How are you, brother? I'm fantastic. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I was just telling Brother Sadiq over here uh-huh. about something that I learned the other day. I learned that Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu yeah. anhu, once uh. said that stick to the truth. Typical Jamaatis. Even if it kills you. Oh, don't worry about him, Muhammad. If he only knew what we knew, and if he had the love of the Prophet and the Sahaba, then he too would have the knowledge that we had. See, Brother Sadiq, only Allah knows the true condition of a Muslim's heart. It may be such that your heart and my heart is blackened and darkened, and Allah is just concealing our faults. However, his heart may be filled with the nur of Allah, and again, only Allah knows the true condition of one's heart. And from that moment on, Imam Sadiq and his brand new companion, Brother 
Imam Muhammad and his brand new companion, Brother Sadiq, exchanged stories, lessons, and shared knowledge and created a bond that would last forever. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا سجن المؤمن وجنة الكافر. Wait, wait, what is that right there? What, what, this? Yeah, what is that? This, oh, oh, this is just dunya, man. This dunya, dunya. Don't that's, worry about that's it. That's gold coins. Can I see that? Okay, but yeah, these are just my coins for my journey. Wait, how many is this? Uh, it's about I don't know, one thousand golden coins. But one thousand gold coins? No, but don't don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just uh, just remember that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said as as I was saying that. The world is the world is a prison for the believer and a paradise for the disbeliever. And from that moment on, Brother Sadiq got an idea. Shaitan got to Brother Sadiq and convinced him to do something that he should have never done. Scene three. Oh no, no! I lost all my money. My money is gone. Can't find it. What's wrong? Why are you yelling so loud? You don't understand. I lost all my money. What happened? Man. Tell us. We'll help you. I'm a poor man. I had a thousand gold coins. And now I look, it's all gone. Someone must have took it. It's okay. You've got us. The news of this crime spread throughout the ship and eventually reached the captain. The captain was a tall man with a thunderous voice. A voice so strong that even those with the heart of hearing could hear him. When he talked... People listen, and this was his ship, and he would not allow crimes to take place on his ship. The captain called all the passengers to the deck and began to address them all. Scene four. I hear there's a thief running around on my ship. Uh, technically, uh, it's Allah's uh, ship. Silence! <laughs> he thinks he can come onto my ship, take whatever he wants and go free. This is to all of you, and to the thief amongst you. I don't know who you are, and I don't know how much money you've taken. But I can assure you that if you're looking for an escape, you will not find one. This is my ship, and now one crime has been committed on any of my ships without justice being served. If you return the money now, this will be the end of it. I will not look for you, I will not pursue you, but if you fail to do so, I will look for you, I will find you, and I will destroy you. <laughs> the captain then or ordered his ship guards, some strong, some not so strong, to order and begin the search. The guards searched and they searched, but the bag nor the money was anywhere to be found. The captain and the guards gathered with the passengers on the deck without a bag, without any money. And at this moment, Brother Sadiq, he realized his mistake and he began to look as guilty as any man does. His, his body language screamed, liar, deceiver, and crook. You're a liar. We tried to help you and you deceived us. You're the worst of the worst. What's wrong with you? The passengers became furious and with the man and his deception, they all gathered around him and beat him. Disgraceful. Having reached his lowest point, the thief feels bad. He, he feels bad that he, he, act, he tried to scam the Imam Muhammad. He, the thief then goes to the scholar, absolutely rejected. The man lied, but Allah revealed the truth to everyone. Oh, Muhammad, when you first boarded the ship, you were very kind to me. You inspired me. You thought I was changing. You thought I was becoming a better person, a better Muslim. But I was only trying to deceive you. I saw the thousand gold coins you had, and my desires kicked in. I, I thought to scam you. So the guard, but the guards searched and searched, but they couldn't find the money. I just want to know where... Where'd you hide it? See, Brother Sadiq, I knew from the moment that you began to yell and scream about a thousand golden, golden coins being stolen that you were indeed plotting against me. So I gathered up all of my coins, I put them into my bag, and I threw it aboard the ship and into the sea. 
The thief was in utter shock. He thought, how could a man simply throw a thousand gold coins overboard? What was the moral behind it? You threw a thousand gold coins over the ship? That could have been my money. My name, my honor is the most sacred and most important thing to me in my life. If I was to be found with a, a bag of golden coins that you claim to have been stolen, then it would, my name and my honor would have been tarnished and tainted forever. My reputation, my word. You think all of this money is more important to me than my reputation, than my honor, and most importantly, my word? The thief was utterly shocked and humbled at the response of the student of knowledge. He then said, What? Who are you? What kind of person does that? My name is Muhammad ibn Ismail, a simple seeker of knowledge. Many of you may be sitting here today wondering, who exactly is Muhammad ibn Ismail? We've never heard of his name. That's because, dear brothers and sisters, this Muhammad ibn Ismail is more famously known as none other than Imam Bukhari. Imam Bukhari, today his book is the widely considered the most authentic book after the Holy Quran. He dedicated and spent 16 years of his life compiling this book. He was so dedicated in his book that before compiling as every hadith, he would pray two rakahs to ensure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect him. But what exactly can we learn from this story of Imam Bukhari? Imam Bukhari knew the value of his honor and his reputation and his word. He knew that first and foremost, we must abstain from any sin. But he also knew that we must stay far away from the allegation of any, stain, any sin that would stain his name and stain his honor. He understood that a stain in his name would not only affect his name and his honor, but will also have a severe effect on the reputation and the authenticity of his books, his teachers, and anything else he is associated with. Today, dear brothers and sisters, the first year class of Darul Salam, we graduate from the scholarly institute. And after this name, our name and our honor is not only linked to ourselves, but rather it is now linked with the reputation of our teachers, our institute, and Islamic scholarship as a whole. It is our duty to hold ourselves accountable to the highest of standards, to first and foremost abstain from all types of sin, and also to stay far away from the allegations of sins as a whole. We must remember that, dear brothers and sisters, with great power comes great responsibility. With this great ilm comes a lifelong connection with Darul Salam and all of our teachers and scholars. We too have a great responsibility on our heads and shoulders. We must cherish it, we must respect it, and we must learn to honor this knowledge, honor whatever we have learned in this, in this institute. And to conclude, we must finally and constantly remind ourselves that we must never, ever sacrifice any portion of our deen just to gain some dunya. We must never sacrifice our religion and everything that we, ha we have learned in this institute to just gain an edge in this dunya. So to all my fellow students and to everyone else here today, I will leave you with this quote. quote Whoever seeks to gain this world by the means of his religion will lose them both. Whoever seeks to gain this mean, the, the means of this world for the sake of his religion will lose them both. But whoever gives up this world for the sake of his religion will truly acquire and gain them both. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. This beautiful story was mentioned by Imam Ajluni, the, the author of Kashf al Khifa wa Muzil al Albas, Al Bas an al Ahadith al Lati Ushtahirat al Al Sina, on the uh, biography of Imam Bukhari, Rahimahullah. And this just shows us what the honor of a Muslim is all about that he's willing to sacrifice a thousand dirhams is nothing in order to protect our honor. So, definitely beautiful lesson for all of us to take back from this story of how the honor of not just a, uh, a, a madrasa student, but more an honor of a person who is connected with Allah. We're all of that. We might not be madrasa students, but we're all Muslims. People recognize us as Muslims. So for the sake of not tarnishing the image of Islam and the image of a follower of Rasulullah we have to go above and beyond whatever we are doing currently. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow myself and all of us to act upon that. Before I, you know, we know that Alhamdulillah because of the few things that we had to, we program got delayed a little bit, mashallah. But nonetheless, um, 
we're still going to complete whatever we had in the schedule. But Hazrat Mufti Sahib, our honorable guest, Mufti Muhammad ibn Adam Kothiri, amongst the other honorable guests who flew in all the way from England, who taught the entire classes throughout the day and then took a two and a half hour flight to the airport and came here straight. And right now he's going to be taking a flight in the next two and a half hours and he's going to be landing after nine hours and 9 a.m. in England and going straight to Madrasa to teach again. So he has to leave to the airport in the next five minutes. So I would, I, he was here, supposed to be here, of course, to hand out the certificates and do the dua and whatnot. But inshallah, you know, he, I have asked him to say a few words, his, uh, his um, you know, sentiments that he would like to share with the community of Chicago, community of Darussalam, students, teachers, as well as all those who've been benefiting from the past weekend here, inshallah. And we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him a, um, not just a guest for once, but allow him to come visit us time and again, inshallah. Zakallah khairan. May I ask the respected ulama to please come forward, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ba'd. Just four or five minutes. I'm not taking much of your time. I actually, uh, I feel very upset that I'm not going to be able to participate and be here right till the end. I was speaking to Sheikh Tamim right now and telling him I feel very bad uh, because of circumstances now. I won't be able to participate and be here right till the dua. As Mufti Adimuddin mentioned that I've got a flight at 7 o'clock, so I have to rush off to the airport. Uh, Alhamdulillah, it's an honor and it's a privilege through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah enabled me to come to your beautiful country, city, and this beautiful place internally and externally. The beauty that we see around us, above, on the faces of the people, the teachers, the students, mashallah, yeah, you know, if, if I had to summarize my stay here, one word, it would be beautiful. You know, everything's beautiful here, mashallah. Mufti Azimuddin is beautiful. Everyone's beautiful. It's just, mashallah, you know, the smile of the students, the character, the akhlaq, uh, beauty from the outside, the surroundings, just, it's very, very pleasant. Uh, I came here Thursday night. I've been here two, two and a half days, three days, and uh, alhamdulillah, I've really enjoyed myself here. Uh, I was able to share some words with you on Saturday and then Sunday and today as well. Uh, it's a very, it was a very good retreat, beneficial for me, first and foremost, and for all the students. And the, we were able to meet a lot of different ulama and guests and see all of you. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the efforts of Darus Salaam, the teachers of Darus Salaam, the principal, the people, and all the people doing khidmah, mashallah, amazing brothers who are looking after the guests and doing khidmah, and also Mufti Minhaj and Mufti Azimuddin's father, who, mashallah, is a pioneer behind this. May Allah accept his efforts. All of you in the community as well for contributing with your time, with your energy, with your efforts and donations. May Allah accept it from all of you, inshallah. I mean, it's, it's, it's wonderful to have a location, an institute like this in, in the midst of America. Who knew 30, 40 years ago that you would have something like this in America? It was just virtually impossible. If you told somebody 30, 40 years ago that we'd have, we'd have a gathering like this, students are gathering, uh, graduating, people are studying hadith and fiqh, it, it, it would be mind-boggling. Nobody would be able to even unimaginable, unthinkable. But this is the karam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how Allah works sometimes that in the midst of kufr and in the midst of, uh, you know, a place where there's no deen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings out, you know, graduates of ulama and people who memorize the Quran and study the Quran. And this is, this is amazing. I mean, you, many of you may have come to England. England is, mashallah, many, many years before America where people started coming. Uh, but I've seen a massive difference. I've been coming to the United States for many years. The, last time, I mean, the first time I think I came was 2008 or something. But, and I was telling uh, some of the brothers in England that in the last 10 years, and before that I wasn't coming, but what I used to hear, we used to send hufad, like people used to invite and send requests from across America we don't have anyone to lead uh, Salatul Taraweeh. And students, when we were young, students used to flock from England. Every year, 
300, 400 students are going to America to lead Taraweeh. But in the last 20 years, there's a massive difference I've seen. It's like here, you go to every masjid, mashallah, there's huffah, there's people reciting Quran, and, you know, beautiful Quran, there's ulama, scholars, Chicago is like a hub. So, mashallah, Allah is uh, accepting all of your efforts. Lots of scholars here who studied in different parts of the world. So I would like to thank Dar es Salaam for inviting me and all of you, inshallah. May Allah accept their efforts and accept all of you, inshallah. And hopefully... We could meet again, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, if my, if, uh, with the permission, Hazrat Mufti Sahib, we've confirmed, inshallah, very soon a two day, uh, two full day seminar or workshop on the fiqh of uh, marriage, divorce, and if you can call it fiqh of love. Uh, and whatever else, mashallah, whoever attended last night's program, whoever attended this morning's program, knows very well that mashallah, he is definitely an expert on this field. So uh, we would like to see a show of hands who are willing to, inshallah ta'ala, come for a two-day workshop if this is held in the next two, three months, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. This brothers are waiting, Shaykh. So we want to see him back, right? Inshallah? Inshallah. So then you have to show up, because I said, I don't know if Chicago is ready for that. He said, he told me the, the workshop he taught today was about one and a half hour. He said, I don't teach one and a half hour. When I do a workshop, I thought it's a seven to eight hour thing. You know, how are you going to be able to teach parenting, which is supposed to be like a 30 year, minimum 30 year, uh, you know, job in, in one and a half hour. So Alhamdulillah, he's planning to come back to our city, to our masjid, to offer a full weekend program. But we need your attendance for that, inshallah. So look forward to an email from Dar es Salaam. Uh, and then when that comes, please make sure that you fulfill this pledge that you made with Mufti Safiya. Jazakumullah khair. We have to, Shaykh, we have to. Um, inshallah, next I'll ask Hafiz Osama Rayyan to come forward, inshallah, and he'll be sharing a spoken word. Um, you know, and the youth will, of course, enjoy this as well as the adults, hopefully, inshallah, if you can follow along. <laughs> inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, so before I begin, um, inshallah, this is like a spoken word poetry thing about uh, my classmates. Uh, we're just trying to express our feelings of how we felt about the year, inshallah. So forgive me if I go a little fast. It's just a part of the art, inshallah. So, jazakumullah khairan. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqadatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Dear respected brothers, sisters, and honored scholars, hardworking mothers, and beloved fathers, welcome to the conclusion of the one year Tanweer program, a revolutionary group of youth whose curiosity about their deen suddenly found themselves in this facility trying to fulfill their dream in a class of 23. Students of knowledge, angels, wings beneath their feet, treading the path to certainty and eternity. Although it wasn't easy and we went through difficulties, we can all attest it it was worth the sweat and the tears after facing our fear rather than bolting out of here. We hear inspiring, igniting words descending from the Lord of worlds. We heard it to get encouraged and put courage in these young birds and turn these birds to men. Increasing brotherhood never understood why shaitan hates us, trying to evict us. What is this? Being his victims tempts us with doubts and lusts. But now we must keep going, keep flowing. So we end up in those gardens glowing. The point isn't to rhyme and sound fine but to deliver a reminder to the mass public run towards Allah you will love it trust it soften up the hearts that are rusted willing to do whatever it takes becoming an ambassador of faith now you might find yourself at our doorstep no hesitation please enter the foundation right foot in don't look back hold your backpack this life or that life take your pick Allahumma ftahli abawaba rahmatik Jazakumullah You heard a beautiful Arabic uh, poetry from him, and today was in, in English, mashallah. Next, we are actually, mashallah, uh, coming close to the pro uh, ending of the program. And I'll ask next Hafiz Muhammad Patel uh, to come forward, a student of the third year, and to recite the Madrasa Anthem, which was written by our Ustad Hazrat Mufti Radha al Haqsab from South Africa.
Our Ustad, he is, he is an expert in Farsi, expert in Urdu, expert in uh, Arabic, of course, to say at the beginning. So he's written this in uh, anthem in, in Urdu. And this is similar to the anthem of, of our own Madrasa Darul Ulum Zakaria. So those of us who are graduates of Darul Ulum Zakaria will remember this and, and cherish those moments when we heard it ourselves from our own graduating class um, many years back. So I'll ask Hafsun Khan Patil, inshallah, too. Render, enjoy, even if we're not understanding the words, there are a lot of Arabic words in there, and uh, we will still be able to at least enjoy the beautiful voice. Please move forward, inshallah. We've got a lot of space here. Assalamu alaikum. Which one? This has the echo on it. Too much echo. Assalamu alaikum. تعلي معرفانا أنداز ساحرانا تعلي معرفانا أنداز ساحرانا يا مدرسة همارا يا مدرسة همارا هي علمك خزانا تعلي معرفانا أنداز ساحرانا تعلي معرفانا أنداز ساحرانا تجويدك ترنم تحفيزك سدائي تجويدك ترنم تحفيزك سدائي تدريسك جواني تفسيرك هواي علم أدبك محفل رهتيه جاودانا علم أدبك محفل رهتيه جاودانا يا مدرسة همارا يا مدرسة همارا هي علمك خزانا تعلي معرفانا أنداز ساحرانا تعلي معرفانا أنداز ساحرانا هرسو مدك تاهو تنويرك في زاهي باتل كميك دومي فريادي بكاهي لهراي غا جهامي حقك يتازيانا لهراي غا جهامي حقك يتازيانا يا مدرسة همارا يا مدرسة همارا هي علمك خزانا تعلي معرفانا أنداز ساحرانا تعلي معرفانا أنداز ساحرانا خشبو بسيه ويه موسم بهت سهانا خشبو بسيه ويه موسم بهت سهانا هر وقت گونجتاه توحید کا ترانا هر وقت گونجتاه توحید کا ترانا یہ مدرسہ ہمارا یہ مدرسہ ہمارا ہی علم کا خزانا تعلي معرفانا أنداز ساحرانا تعلي معرفانا أنداز ساحرانا يا ديو بنك كرنيه شول زنيها فر عزمتك أبر رحمة سايا فجنيها فر أبتيري عزمتو فر هيرانه زمانا أبتيري عزمتو فر هيرانه زمانا يا مدرسة همارا يا مدرسة همارا هي علم يا خزانا تعلي معرفانا أنداز ساحرانا تعلي معرفانا أنداز ساحرانا إكهات مي شريعة إكهات مي طريقة قربان جاء وتجبر سينة مه حقيقة شاهان باكفا مي دلقيق لندرانا 
شاهاني باكا فن ميدلقي قلندرانا يا مدرسة همارا يا مدرسة همارا هي علمك خزانا تعني معرفانا أنداس ساحرانا تعني معرفانا أنداس ساحرانا ساري دينو كي تركن هر درد كي دواهي دايم رهي يكوثر بي ماركي شفاهي الله سيد عاهي هم سبكي عاجزانا الله سيد عاهي هم سبكي عاجزانا يا مدرسة همارا يا مدرسة همارا هي علمك خزانا تعني معرفانا أنداز ساحرانا تعني معرفانا أنداز ساحرانا يا طالب العلوم رحمتك لين آو يا طالب العلوم رحمتك لين آو قسمة بدلنا آو حكمة كلين آو سن لي جي رزاسي يا حرف ناسحانا سن لي جي رزاسي يا حرف ناسحانا يا مدرسة همارا يا مدرسة همارا هي علمك خزانا تعني معرفانا أنداز ساحرانا تعني معرفانا أنداز ساحرانا يا مدرسة همارا يا مدرسة همارا هي علمك خزانا تعني معرفانا أنداز ساحرانا تعني معرفانا أنداز ساحرانا جزاك الله خير الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم ما شاء الله that was a very beautiful recitation of this poem written by Ustad Mufti Allah Al Haqsab may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala make our madrasa like our alma mater Darul Zakaria and and allow us to follow the footsteps of our pious predecessors. So alhamdulillah, finally we come to that portion that many of the graduates have been waiting for, and that is the announcements of the final results of the exam, the first, second, and third place, and inshallah, awarding of the certificates. So inshallah, we will begin with our fifth year students. Alhamdulillah, we have uh, first place, please come up, inshallah. Mulan Tami will be handing out the certificates and the awards. Suleiman Hamid, fifth year, first place. Takbir. Takbir. Fatawal Hamidiyah, right? So we have, for the student of knowledge, the most uh, precious gift is books. We have some very valuable books, alhamdulillah, that are being distributed to the students. And then, second place, we actually have a tie. Ibrahim Hamid and Suleiman Patel. Both, mashallah, uh, got the exact same uh, average score of all their exams. So they'll be receiving Zad al-Masir Tafsir book. Suleiman Patel and Ibrahim Hamid. Takbir. Takbir. They're coming quickly from the back. They're in khidma, mashallah. And then, in third place, we have Kamran. He will be receiving a book in Aqidah Nibras. Please come forward, inshallah. So this was a total surprise. That's why they weren't ready for it, perhaps. Okay. So, Mubarak. Moving on to the third year, inshallah. First place is we have Muhammad Irfan. Muhammad Irfan. First place is here. He's in Khidmat. Okay, we can keep his gift aside. Uh, second place, we have Hafiz Faraz Abdul Mu'id. Hafiz Faraz, second place, inshallah, in the third year. 
In third place, we have Hafiz Muhammad Patel. We just heard his beautiful recitation. Third place. Wait, tear off limbo. Wait for the second place. Skipping the line here. So Hafiz Faraz, go ahead and meet one of them. Okay. So. Okay, mashallah. So that was our uh, third year. Then, alhamdulillah, you should stick around for the Hafsan. Then we have the uh, second year. Alhamdulillah, uh, first place, we have beautiful student Hafiz Yusuf Suleiman from Miami. I mean, all of these students, I can keep on talking about them and praising them. There's so much to say about each one. May Allah reward all of them. May Allah accept them, make them shine. Hafiz Yusuf Suleiman from from Miami first place. Then we have second place, Hafiz Umar Farooqi, Jamil Ulumi Wal Hikam. He was the book you'll receive as a gift. Jamil Ulumi, yeah. And um, third place, we have a tie between Hafiz Muhsin Muhammad and Hafiz Junaid Ajmeri. So they ended up getting exact um, be between all the 10 classes and the multiple exams. I don't know how they ended up getting the same exact average. And then I'm looking at the screen, I'm saying, oh, we have to give two gifts <laughs> when I calculated it. So, but they ended up getting the exact. Okay. Then, inshallah, alhamdulillah, at the same time, uh, we have the Hafs. We heard the recitation of uh, Qirat Saba'a last night by Hafiz Suleiman. And alhamdulillah, they are still engaged in that. They have not completed recitation of, uh, of the Quran. We write Hafs and Asim. We write Saba'a, Imma Saba'a. But they have finished by Riwayat Hafs and Asim. So a number of students finished that. But their Ustad, mashallah, is very particular. And he has given uh, special sanad to those uh, that he believes are qualified to receive the sanad. And this sanad, if you pass me the first one, I want to show the people that, alhamdulillah, this is a sanad which is very beautiful, that after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our teacher, he mentions, فَيَقُولَ عَبْدُ الْفَقِيرِ اللَّهِ samad and he mentions his name, that I recited the Qur'an, with tajweed to my teacher Qari Ayyub bin Ibrahim Ishaq and he recited to his teacher Qari Anis this is our same teachers that we have and all of their teachers are mentioned it goes on he, he recited the Quran to his teacher who recited to his teacher who recited to his teacher and until we come to the Sahib al-Riwaya Imam Hafs ibn Sulaiman Sahib al-Riwaya Ani Shaykh al-Imam Abi Bakr Asim ibn Najud al-Tabi'i from his teacher Imam Asim al-Tabi'i عن الشيخين زير بن حبيش الأسدي وعبد الله بن حبيب السلمي and these two تابعين وهما عن سيدنا عثمان وعلي وأبي بن كعب وعبد الله بن مسعود وزيد بن ثابت we know these names رضي الله عنهم أجمعين and they recited the Quran who is their teacher عن النبي صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وسلم and this is where the sanad of the hadith terminates but this is the sanad of the Quran so the sanad of the Quran continues on عن جبرائيل عليه السلام عن الله رب العالمين عز وجل سبحانه وتعالى. So this is a sanad of unbroken teachers and mashayikh that they have recited the Quran heart to heart and this is now being presented to the following students alhamdulillah. So there are two, this is one is a sanad from the teacher and one is the shahada which it goes with it from the madrasa. قد تم الدراسة القرآن الكريم برواية الإمام القاري أبي عمر أبي عمر حفص بن سليمان الكوفي عن الإمام القاري عاصم النجود الكوفي من طريق شاطبية وفي أثناء ذلك درس من كتب الفن المعتمدة شرحا وإيضاحا وبيانا على يد أستاذ أخذه عن شيخه بسند متصل بالأشياء بالأشياء الحذاق الراسخين في هذا العلم الشريف ونجح في الاختبارات بتقدير ممتاز. So the, alhamdulillah they have succeeded in uh, the examination, but as I mentioned this was not given to all the students, only the selected ones. Uh, and the rest of them, we hope that if they work harder on the tajweed, they can acquire the sanad next year. The door is not closed for them. 
But I just wanted to point out that it's not that everyone who was in the class got it. Only those who qualified, alhamdulillah. So keeping that in mind, alhamdulillah, first one we call up for receiving this is uh, Ibrahim bin Rafi' al-Din Hamid. Hafiz Ibrahim bin Rafi' al-Din Hamid. Please accept your summary. Mona Ihtaram is there, Ustad here, mashallah. And then Suleiman bin Rafi' al-Din Hamid, his brother, Hafiz Suleiman. Third one is Hafiz Suleiman Patel bin Siraj Patel. Then we have Muhammad Patel, Hafiz Muhammad Patel. MashaAllah. And we have Hafiz Faraz Abdul Mu'id. MashaAllah. MashaAllah, this is a very, very great accomplishment. Takbir. 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 Alhamdulillah. Okay. So the next thing we have is the first year. We have in the first year two classes. One are those who did the one-year intensive program, the Tanweer graduates. We have first, second, and third place as well in there. And then we have the first year B, those who are doing the Alim program along with high school. So first year A, boys in the graduating class. First place, alhamdulillah, is Ammar Ahmad. We just heard his Arabic speech, takbir. Ammar Ahmad came first place. And he's tied with Aman Siddiqui. Aman Siddiqui as well, both came first place. Second place, we have Umar Al Khan. MashaAllah. Who actually uh, was, mashallah, did great at the exams. So, yeah, mashallah. And third place, we have Usama Rayyan. Hafiz Usama Rayyan. Many of these kids, they're all from Fas. Then we have in the first year, boys B. First place, we have Umar Mustafa. Mashallah. First year, boys B. Umar Mustafa. Second place, Musab Sheikh. And third place, Ismail Chaudhary. This brother is all, these are the Rockford brothers. They moved here from Rockford for the madrasa. Dr. Asim Mustafa, Musab Sheikh, second place. Ismail Chaudhary, third place. Right, so. What's left? So, we have to give this to everyone. We did this in this. Okay, now inshallah the entire class of the first year there is going to receive gifts because they are graduating from the one year program and receive the certificates in the order. Inshallah, first place, Ammar Ahmad, come receive your certificate. Aman Siddiqui, come in the order, inshallah, I'll be calling the names quicker because they have the whole class. Umar Al Khan, Usama Rayyan, Yusuf Rashid, Hafiz Mustafa Ali. 
حبس أنس علي جبرائيل خان طيب أحمد حازم الخن ياسين نجيب جابر حارس موسى خطك شيراز حسن نعمان سيد عمار عثمان شازين رضا حاشر جمالوي عمير علي عثمان أحمد معاذ قريشي and Brother Raja Umair Amjad. Takbir. 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 The reason I'm um, hesitating, if you have to unmute it for the girls, the girls have their own program, and then there's a part of the program which is together. They need five more minutes. <laughs> okay. So, alhamdulillah, we are now, what's left now is basically the hifz khatam. We have, alhamdulillah, four boys who finished the hafiz of the Quran, and we have uh, three girls who finished. This, that is for this year. So we will have the hifz khatam for them, inshallah. And we want to do it together when the sister is available. Okay. So alhamdulillah, the last graduation that is left is the tahfiz of Qur'an. Uh, I can announce it for the boys' side while we're waiting for the girls to get ready, alhamdulillah. We have one young boy who surprised us, and he finished the Hifz of the Quran just on Friday, right when the retreat was starting, that he recited his last. So the three who fought became four. We have, first was Saleh Abdul Salam. Please come forward, take your plaque, receive your plaque, inshallah. Then we have Ali Ahmad. May Allah reward your parents and your siblings. Accept them, inshallah. And give a health to your father. Then we have Isa Kamran. Hafiz Isa Abdul Rahman, son of Brother Kamran. And we have the last young Hafiz, Saad Suleiman, son of Suleiman, brother Suleiman. Saad, young boy who just finished by Mufti Abdul Hanan. So the first student, mashallah. Takbir. Nine years old? Mashallah, nine years old. So this was uh, Mufti Abdul Han's students. The previous three students were uh, Mona Saqib's uh, students, our old uh, senior HIFS teacher, mashallah. So these are our HIFS graduates on the boys' side. Can I do the thing? Okay, inshallah. Now on the girls' side, just to announce it, on the, on the women's side, we have the awards and certificates, just like, mashallah, our office manager, may Allah reward him, who runs the whole office, Brother Saadat, had everything in line. I called so many names, they all went through. He had everything, all the certificates in order of the, of the grades already. Likewise, on the girls' side, I hope that you have the certificates ready, <laughs> because we, I'll be announcing them, inshallah, and as I announce them, you can distribute the awards. So, we'll start with the hafidat. We have, alhamdulillah, Amina Ahmad, Hafidha Amina Ahmad, daughter of brother Junaid Ahmad, chief in the Hifz of Quran. She can receive her plaque, inshallah. 
on the woman's side? Hafiza Amina Ahmad, daughter of Brother Junaid Ahmad. Then we have number two, Hafiza Uruj Abdullah, daughter of Brother Jamil Abdullah. Hafiza Uruj Abdullah, daughter of Jamil Abdullah. And Hafiza Amina Sayyida Nazimuddin, daughter of Sayyid Asif Nazimuddin. Takbir. 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 So, mashallah, we have not only Hufaz of the Quran, we have Hafizat of the Quran. Inshallah, they will be such mothers that have the whole Quran in their heart. May Allah bless them with righteous husbands and righteous children and make them successful in this life and the hereafter as well. Then on the girl's side, we have the first year, A and B as well. Those that are doing the one-year intensive only and then those that are doing high school as well. Now over here in the girl's side, The competition was very, very, very uh, strong here. And the, the high-ranking students with high scores are so many. They are tied for first place, tied for second place, tied for third place. It is crazy. So it, uh, uh, I was looking at this. They got 98%. We have two girls who got 98%. Hiba Mustafa, daughter of Dr. Asim Mustafa. And Nushra Malik, daughter of Naveed, Dr. Naveed Malik. Both got 98% average of all their scores. So two first place awards for Hiba Mustafa, Bint Dr. Asim Mustafa, and Nushra Malik, Bint Dr. Naveed Malik. Then we have two second place. Um, Mariam Zafar, daughter of Dr. Zafar. Mashallah, these people have come from Dr. Asim Mustafa from Rockford, Dr. Naveed Malik from New Orleans, Dr. Zafar from Tampa, and Zaiba Wara, son, a daughter of our friend Iqbal Wara from Harvey. The closest one is Harvey so far. MashaAllah. So they, they came second place. And then third place, Humaira Mansouri, daughter of Muhammad Sharif Mansouri, and Iman Naeem, uh, uh, daughter of Dr. Muhammad Naeem, again from New, New Orleans. So these are our third place winners, Humaira Mansouri and Iman Naeem. So the three presents became six presents. <laughs> MashaAllah. More barakah. And then afterwards, the teachers are giving further gifts to Hafsa Ajmeri, daughter of Sufail Ajmeri, and Sama Hamid, daughter of Rafiuddin Hamid, Hibar Abdul Rahman, daughter of Imtiaz Abdul Rahman, Ali Ajmeri, daughter of Samir Ajmeri, and Fariya Yasin, daughter of Muhammad Yasin. And we have elder uh, students as well, Sister Wahida Yaqub. Azina Chaudhary and Maryam Mohsin. So all of you will receive gifts from your teachers. The teachers are giving further gifts to the entire class. They are the gifts that have been given by the Darussalam, the books, and then they are further gifts from your teachers. Please accept them. Then we have the girls' high school class. In the high school class, I'm perhaps going a little bit fast. It will take time to distribute it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you successful, make you the coolness of the eyes of your parents. And then we have high school girls. Uh, first place, the daughter of Harun Ajmeri. Second place, the daughter of Muhammad Sharif Mansouri. And we have three girls tied for third place. Riyaz Ajmeri Saab's daughter, Mufti Harun Firdosi's daughter, and Sayyid Muhyiddin's daughter. They are all tied for third place. And then we have the rest of the girls as well. They'll be receiving awards, Dr. Rafi's daughter, Brother Aslam Khan's daughter, Samir Ajmeri's daughter, and Hafiz Mirza's daughter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of them. The Hafizats were Junaid, Brother Junaid Ahmad's daughter, Jamil Abdullah's daughter, and Sayyid Asif Nazimuddin Saab's daughter. These are the three Hafizats, Amina Ahmad, Uruj Abdullah, and Amina Sayyida Nazimuddin.
Alhamdulillah, these are those who are not present. So now we will actually have the physical Ahibs Khatam where we will recite the last surahs together with the Hufad. So I request the Hufad who graduated to come in the front, inshallah. All the Hufad come in the front. Mona Sakhib Sahib, you start so. Mona Sakhib Sahib should come forward. Hmm? Inshallah, we will do the Hibs Khatam with his graduates and have the final dua. Mona Sakhib Sahib, I'll get the shit like Inshallah, please repeat after me. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahmani ar-Rahim. Bismillahi ar-Rahmani ar-Rahim. قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ميم ألف لام ميم ذلك كتابنا ريب فيه ذلك 
الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومن رزقناهم ينفقون الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون وبالآخرة هم يوقنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون وأولئك هم المفلحون صدق الله العظيم صدق الله العظيم جزاكم الله خيرا تكبير 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 may Allah reward all and every one of the participants from the Hufad from the uh, Alim program from the one year program from the Qiraat Sabah program from the Hafs program all those young men and women who studied so hard, alhamdulillah, today have received their gifts and their teachers as well. Before I ask Sheikh Tamim uh, to do the closing remarks and dua, I would like to take this opportunity uh, to, uh, to thank everyone here for attending uh, the graduation, attending the retreat. I would like to thank the parents of the students. If it wasn't for your support and allowing you, uh, us to um, work with your children, we would have never been able to achieve this, whatever we have. And we, uh, we really appreciate the parents' support uh, with the madrasa and with the academy. I'd like to thank our uh, amazing staff from the Hifs program, from the Makta program, from the Alim program, all of our, my dear colleagues who worked uh, and who continue to work uh, around the clock under, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, under such you know, exams and grades and all sorts of stuff for the retreat and worked all weekend long, mashallah, to get everything up and running. We are very blessed to have uh, my colleagues, Mulan Ali Godil, Mulan Yaqub, Mulan Ihtiram, uh, Mulan Jamal, uh, Mulan Ifdal, uh, Mufti Azaz, uh, and Mulan Masayib, um, and Mufti Harun, who was with us as well, mashallah, and all the uh, Mulan Asaqib, Mufti Abdul Hanan, Mufti Abdul Mannan, the Weekend Academy teachers as well. Um, we are really, really happy and blessed that we have such an amazing group of young brothers, and of course, of course, our extremely dedicated female teachers, Apas, on, uh, who are working around the clock as well uh, uh, with extreme sincerity and, and, and attention to detail. Um, so I'd like to thank all of our teachers. Really, we can't achieve anything without the dedication and the ikhlas and the hard work of our beloved teachers and staff at Dar es Salaam. I'd like to also recognize our office uh, staff, um, Saadat and Subhan, for the tireless effort and work around the clock throughout the retreat and of course throughout the year as well. I'd like to appreciate and thank our uh, volunteers, who the Ansar group throughout the year who work uh, behind the scenes um, and in front as well, all night, all day to ensure this place is up and running. It's very easy, it's very easy to sit back and enjoy a program like this. But we have no idea, you know, subhanAllah, I tell brothers, <laughs> I don't know if I just say this or not, I am, there's actually about 28 that I'm part of, 28 Dar Salaam WhatsApp groups. Okay, and during the retreat, there's another four or five that have been added. There's so many aspects to running the place. So many different aspects. And there's this handful of those Ansar, uh, seven or eight. And it's not by no means is it restricted to them. If you're willing to help, please join us. Sometimes people think that, oh, subhanAllah, you guys are something. No, we're not. It's, it's, it's tireless. At 1 a.m., brothers are being woken up from bed. 
last night to work on the audio. All sorts of stuff all night. Right now, till the bro- brother texted me and said, we're washing the tarps in the parking lot. When the dua comes, starts, let us know. They haven't even participated in any program. Right? So because they're working to ensure that food is served on time, everything is done smooth, smooth as much as possible. So we need to really appreciate. I'd like you on the way out, please say a few kind words to these Ansar. Allah will reward them. But you know, man nas lam The one who can't thank people, can Allah, you'll never be able to thank Allah. So all those brothers and sisters on the sister side, those leads who've been working tirelessly throughout the retreat and throughout the year, and especially during peak times like the retreat, and will be working during Atikaf as well. We thank them from the bottom of our heart, all the group of Ansar that we have, and especially those who helped out in the retreat, the serving committee, the parking lot committee, the security, the bookstall brothers the, and sisters, the informational booth uh, brothers and sisters, those who helped out in fundraising, etc., Every one of you, we are extremely grateful that we have people like you. Without your support, wallahi, nothing can be done. We are, we are strong and united because we have a team like yourself. And we pray and we beg to Allah that He keeps us love with, amongst us forever, keeps us united, and allows this, um, uh, this family to continue to grow, inshallah ta'ala, so that we can continue to serve more and more people. Um, and of course, last but not least, I'd like to thank and appreciate uh, my, my teachers who are not present here. Uh, uh, for all the dedication and whatever they have given me, alhamdulillah, I usually take opportunities like these to contact them or at least leave messages, which I did, and I received good du'as for them uh, at this moment. And, and alhamdulillah, most importantly, most importantly, I'd like to thank and must thank my mother and my father. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them immensely for whatever they have taught me and whatever they have given me and continue to give and support me. And 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 Daru Salam and... and huh? uh, uh-huh. He's co- corrected me, yes. So um, us all f- four siblings, uh, mashallah, that our, our parents have, have uh, been uh, with us and continue to be with us. May Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be all of us sons and daughters who are listening here today to become the coolness of the eyes of our parents, to make us uh, a means of their peace and comfort in their older age and allow us to become a means of uh, their support on the day of judgment. Uh, when they will be wanting to see you know, what good deeds we have done. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the efforts of, of, of all those who I forgot to mention. Please forgive us, uh, those who have the donors, supporters, patrons who sponsored meals or who paid for um, the retreat expenses or other things. All this stuff, it's a very big united effort. Everyone has a share. We don't know because of whose simple action uh, the, the, you know, this gathering will get accepted. So um, the actual acceptance of a gathering is not by how smoothly things are run or how many people attended. The acceptance is the acceptance by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to, that's why I end with a dua, asking Allah that, Ya Allah, we did whatever we could, but true acceptance is something only you know. And so for that, inshallah ta'ala, I will ask Sheikh Tamim to share a few words in, in dua. Um, there are many requests for dua. Many mothers and sisters, brothers have asked dua for this beloved ones who are sick people who are lost their jobs, people who are trying to sell their homes, people who are trying to get out of riba, all sorts of requests have come in. Inshallah, those are all kept in mind. And we will, this is a Mubarak gathering. Khatm al-Quran, one Khatm al-Quran, people come from so far. Imagine we witnessed seven Khatm al-Qurans here. Subhanallah. And not reading, memorization. And witness qira'at, uh, qira'at completions. We witnessed so many uh, completions here. So let us pour our heart out in our dua. And gather together. Let's come close, inshallah. Come close together, inshallah. Ask for ourselves, for the entire ummah, um, and, and, and for the needs of dunya, qabr, and akhirah, inshallah. We ask the volunteers in the hallways, in the lobbies, in the tents, if you can come in. Please move cl- closer, inshallah. Fill in the gaps. There's many brothers and sisters who are outside working. Please, one of the brothers can call them in, inshallah. Um, I know after, after Mufti uh, Muhtamim's uh, uh, dua, people will be leaving. I need, inshallah ta'ala, 20. I'm not asking for the volunteers. Someone besides the volunteers who work in the retreat. I need 20 hands to help me and help us here, inshallah ta'ala, to get this place back to how it was on Friday, inshallah. I have one brother, two, three, four, gee, five, six, seven, eight, mashallah, nine. Gee, I need, I need another 11 brothers. The park, I will lie, with 11, 12, 13, 14. G, 15, mashallah, 16, G, four more, four more brothers, 17, 18, 19, and 20, Zakallah khair. We have a lot of work to do, my friends. We talked about uh, environment, we talked about loving the earth, we talked about being best ambassadors. The parking lot is a mess. Hundreds of water bottles, cigarette butts, all over the place. 
So we, uh, besides the double parking, that's another thing. But dirtying the masjid property. Wallahi, we, may Allah, well, let's repent from this. This is a major sin. We come to the house of Allah and we throw water bottles, cigarette butts, uh, candy wrappers all over the place. Wallahi, the place wasn't like this when we came in on Friday. And the place is a mess outside. So we request you, inshallah, besides the 20 brothers too, when you're sitting in your car, you see some garbage, kindly pick that up and assist us in keeping this house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the cleanest place. Jazakallah khair. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. First and foremost, brothers and sisters, I wanted to mention how many graduations have you been to which gives a sanad that connects you all the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot realize the maqam and the status of this majlis. And when this sanad was being given, this sanad and this chain of narration that connects these students all the way to Rasulullah, to Jibreel, to Allah Azza wa Jal, we cannot compare this graduation to any graduation. I don't think yani, we, we can really fathom the greatness and the barakah and the blessings of this gathering. That in this country, in this land, in this Mubarak place, in this blessed city, Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed us that we are continuing this sanad that connects us back to the Sahaba, to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all the way to Allah azza wa jal. This is a miracle of Islam. What you have witnessed, this is not just a simple khatam of the Quran. This is not just any graduation that you're giving, giving somebody a certificate. This certificate has a very, very great stance with Allah azza wa jal. And really, what is in my heart I cannot express. You are only getting what is a portion of what is in my heart. And you know, we're used to giving flowery speeches, so we're saying this. But really, like, I have a lot of, there's a lot of heaviness inside of my heart right now. That, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this Mubarak Majlis. And I want to say to everybody that, alhamdulillah, this is one of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a miracle of Islam. And we have to understand, khayrukum man ta'allam al-Qur'ana wa'allamahu. The best of you. The best of you is the one who learns the Qur'an and teaches it. Congratulations to the teachers. Congratulations and Mubarak to the students. Congratulations and Mubarak to the uh, parents. Mubarak to you that this is securing your akhirah, securing your success in this life and in the hereafter. My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters, this is an honor in this life and an honor in the akhirah. This is an izzat in this life and an izzat in the akhirah. And I ask Allah Azza wa Jal out of His sublime mercy to accept this gathering, to make this a gathering which is accepted because the main thing that is the reality of this majlis is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts it. If we do not have the acceptance and the qabuliyat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then truly we are nothing. So we ask Allah Azza wa Jal and we will make dua now and we will ask him through the barakah of this Mubarak gathering to inshallah, you know, grant us our needs of what we are about to ask him inshallah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ash'af al-anbiya wal mursaleen. Allahumma laka alhamdu hamdan da'iman ma'a dawamik. Wa laka alhamdu hamdan khalidan ma'a khuludik. Wa laka alhamdu hamdan la muntaha lahu duna mashiyyatik. ولك الحمد حمدا عند كل طرفة عين وتنفس كل نفس اللهم لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك ولعظيم سلطانك اللهم لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك ولعظيم سلطانك اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد صلاة تنجينا بها من جميع الأهوال والآفات وتقضيننا بها جميع الحاجات وتطهرنا بها من جميع السيئات وترفعنا بها عندك أعلى الدرجات وتبلغنا بها أخص الغايات من جميل الخيرات في الحياة وبعد الممات إنك على كل شيء قدير 
اللهم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا اللهم متعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا أبدا ما أحييتنا وجعله الوارث منا وجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل مسيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا وجعل الجنة هي دارنا وقرارنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك فينا ولا يرحمنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ارحمنا بالقرآن العظيم اللهم ارحمنا بالقرآن العظيم اللهم ارحمنا بالقرآن العظيم وجعله لنا إماما ونورا وهدى ورحمة اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته آناء الليل وأطراف النهار وجعله حجة لنا لا حجة علينا يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا اللهم اجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا ونور صدورنا وجلاء أحزاننا وذهاب همومنا وغمومنا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم اللهم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم اللهم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم اجعل اللهم اجعل هذا الاجتماع اجتماعا مرحوما واجعل تفرقنا تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل منا ولا فينا ولا معنا شقيا ولا محروما يا رب العالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم اغفر لحينا وميتنا وشاهدنا وغائبنا وصغيرنا وكبيرنا وذكرنا وأنثانا اللهم من أحيته منا فأحيي على الإسلام ومن توفيته منا فتوفه على الإيمان اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولمشايخنا ولمن له حق علينا ولجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وجعلنا منهم واخذل من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خذلانا ولا تجعلنا معهم Oh Allah سبحانه وتعالى accept this blessed gathering Oh Allah عز وجل accept this blessed gathering Oh Allah تعالى make this gathering those gatherings that you are pleased with Ya Allah Oh Allah shower your blessings and your mercy and your acceptance and your eternal pleasure with this gathering, Ya Rabbil Alameen. O oh Allah Ta'ala, all of those people who made this gathering po possible in any way, who served in any way, who volunteered in any way, O oh Allah Ta'ala, bless them in their Iman, and bless them in their Islam, bless them in their wealth, bless them in their health. O oh Allah Ta'ala, make them a pleasure for you and your Rasul on the Day of Judgment. O oh Allah Ta'ala, make them a pleasure for, for, for you and your Rasul on the Day of Judgment. O oh Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Accept all of these students and accept the teachers and O oh Allah Ta'ala accept the parents. O oh Allah Ta'ala the sacrifices that they have made for your sake. O oh Allah Ta'ala you do not let that go to waste. O oh Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala make the teachers and the students and the volunteers and anyone who contributed in any way, O oh Allah, with their prayers, with their wealth, with their, with their attention, with their support in any way that it was possible. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bless them and be pleased with them and give them the best of this life and the hereafter and give them, the, give them and save them from the harms of this life and the hereafter, Ya Rabbil Alameen. O oh Allah ta'ala, accept the progenies of the people that are here, Ya Rabbil Alameen, till the day of judgment. O oh Allah ta'ala, make this make this gathering and make every single person who is in this gathering that our brothers and sisters our men and women, our young and old, O oh Allah Ta'ala, make them a, a means and make us true ambassadors to your messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. O oh Allah Ta'ala, in this gathering we were speaking about 
being true ambassadors. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make us such ambassadors. Ya Allah, make us such role models, make us such examples for your, for your, for your Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he will be pleased with us on the day of judgment. Oh Allah ta'ala, make Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pleased with us that when he sees us on the day of judgment at the hold, his face is smiling and radiant like the full moon, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Oh Allah Azza wa Jal, forgive our mistakes. Oh Allah Ta'ala, if we may made any mistake in the recitation of the Quran, in the learning of the Quran, in the teaching of the Quran, in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, the distribution and the proliferation of this knowledge, Ya Allah Ta'ala, we are not worthy. Oh Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, we are not worthy, but Ya Allah accepted of us, and you are Kareem, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Wal Kareem alladhi yu'ti bidun al istihqaqi wal minna. Oh Allah, you give without being, without someone being deserving. Oh Allah, we are not deserving, but you are Kareem. Oh Allah, we are not deserving. But you are Rahim. Oh Allah, out of your mercy, accept us. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of those people that are sick, oh Allah, you grant them shifa. All of our marhumin and our deceased family members and parents who have passed away, oh Allah ta'ala, you grant them Jannatul Firdaus and you give them maghfirah. Oh Allah ta'ala, anyone who is going through any difficulty in their jobs, oh Allah ta'ala, you give them halal and lawful employment. Oh Allah ta'ala, anybody that's going through any trouble in their life or in their deen, oh Allah, you remove all of that difficulty from them. You remove their worldly and afterworldly hardships from, from in front of them, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make this gathering a means of blessings and barakah to all of those who are attendees. And oh Allah ta'ala, our neighbors and our fellow our fellow non-Muslims and the fellow citizens that are in this locality, that are living in this city, that are living in this state, that are living in this country. Oh Allah Ta'ala, you bless them. And oh Allah Ta'ala, you guide them. Oh Allah Ta'ala, you allow us to serve them in the best way that we can for your sake, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Oh Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, accept this gathering. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you bless our teachers and make this teaching and this learning a sadaqa ijariya and a perpetual reward for our teachers that this will go back to our beloved Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samiyul alim wa tub alayna inna kanta tawab rahim There are so many things to ask for, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know what is in the hearts of every single person in this gathering. O oh Allah, you know what is the needs of every single person in this gathering. O oh Allah ta'ala, you fulfill our needs. O oh Allah, there are so many things to ask of, but we do not know. You know our needs of this life and the hereafter. So we ask you, O oh Allah, through your infinite knowledge, O oh Allah, you bless us with all of the good things that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has asked you. And oh Allah ta'ala, you protect us from all of those things that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has sought refuge from. Allahumma inna nas'aluka min khayri ma sa'alaka minhu nabiyuka Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa na'udhu bika min sharri ma sta'adha minhu nabiyuka Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa anta al-musta'an wa alayka al-balagh. Wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inna kunna min al-zalimeen. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inna kunna min al-zalimeen. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inna kunna min al-zalimeen. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. I just want to say to everyone, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have to actually catch a flight. So I say salam and inshallah, jazakumullah khairan to Darus Salam, to this community for having me. May Allah Azza wa Jal accept this gathering and bless all of you. Jazakumullah khairan.